Hello Doctor Who fans wherever you are and welcome to another brilliant episode of Who Corner to Corner. My name is Paul and I'm joined as always by Machumba, Mr. Jeff. How you doing Jeff? You alright mate? By your my what? Chumba. It's my new word. I've, I've commandeered it. I picked it up from a video game and now I use it in everyday life. Just get used to it. I'm okay. going to be using it all the time from oh, now on. Okay, I will. Yeah, I'm good. Excellent. Um, yeah, chumba tastic. Yeah, that's. Don't, no, don't do that. that. That's me. Anyway, before we dig any more shallow graves for ourselves, let's introduce our very, very, very special guest who is none other than the editor in chief of SFX magazine himself, Mr. Darren Scott. Hello, Darren. How are you doing, sir? Hello, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, we're good, good thank, thank you. you. Look at that, you got uh, a round of applause from our hidden audience right there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll add it in post. Yeah, we'll yeah. do that, we'll do that. So thank you for joining us tonight, Darren. I gather from uh, from various tweets that have passed backwards and forwards in the last few weeks that this is something of a, of a long-held aspiration for you to join a, a Doctor Who podcast. Is that not the case? Yes. Yeah, I just thought that I probably should do um something like this because i don't I, I just don't really i'm so busy doing the magazine that i don't really um yeah involve myself in the world of, of podcasts <laughs> and what have you so uh, <laughs> i just hear about them all the time but i never actually go on them i listen to them but i don't um yeah so then i just thought well life why not why not, why not go for it and of course yeah. we are delighted to have you uh, choose yes, this very, podcasting very honest, experience yeah. with our with our good selves because um despite whatever you may have heard me and jeff are absolute professionals um we do this <laughs> literally all the time as you can tell yeah. from jeff's rather slick entry from from yeah, earlier yeah. with his PC My and everything. My internet signal is, is always top notch. <laughs> it is indeed. So Darren, we have um, we have put together some questions and we scour scoured a few from our followers on uh, on social media, all three of them, and we've got a list of sent questions and we would like to put these to you to find out a little bit more about your good self and maybe to have some good old Doctor Who and sci-fi in general kind of chat as we go along. So, let me put the first of these questions to you, sir. So, I've been doing a little bit of background, a little bit of stalking, and I discovered that you studied journalism at university. So, my first question is, was it always your intention to be a journalist? Um, no, I think I wanted to... Well, I think I wanted to be a diver, and then I discovered sharks. Okay. And then, so I thought, <laughs> not. Yeah, that, that's a reasonable, uh, you know, career change based off of that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, just Tom. one, you know, a swift move from one to the other. Yeah. Then I thought I wanted to be a pop star, but I thought when I was younger that you had to win the Eurovision Song Contest ah. to be allowed to be a pop star. <laughs> Didn't it wasn't it nothing to do with being able to sing or anything. I just thought that you had to win this contest. So, um, but also when I was a kid, I just really loved comics, yeah. and I used to make I used to make little pretend comics and put them in the newsagents. Um, whether they wanted them or not, <laughs> so it was always a um, yeah. There was a sort of like a, I wanted to do that yeah. kind of thing, but then life went another way, and I had a whole other career. And then I went to university, slightly older, mm. um, and um, yeah. So then, long story short, I eventually got to do the thing that I wanted to do. But everything fell into place at mm. the right time. Mm. So because otherwise, these the career path that I had, it wouldn't have been around. I would have done something different and quite pleased with what I <laughs> well it, it seems like you've you've always had some sort of hankering for it because I, I was reading that you, uh, you 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 revived the university magazine while you were there is that true I did yeah actually um yeah it was a student newspaper called Veritas mm. which I believe is Latin for, for something oh yes I knew that <laughs> Latin for something and uh and uh, <laughs> Funnily enough, as with everything that I've ever done in a lot, uh, in my mm. career, it was always full of Doctor Who because at that point, Doctor Who had just recently come back on BBC. So, um, uh, yeah, so there was a lot of a lot of Doctor Who content in the student <laughs> newspaper. But in my defence, it was the number one show at the time. Yeah. So um, yes, it's justified. Yeah, you don't need to make excuses to us. You know, <laughs> we we done always the same. Like I, have, I always feel like I have to sort of uh, yeah, it's because I think when you're growing mm. up with it. It, I mean, you guys probably didn't know the same. It wasn't. It was never cool. It was never mm. in. I mean, it was cool to us, but you know. So even now, all these however many years later, <coughs> yeah. you kind of go. Yeah. 
you kind of feel like you have to, even though it has been like this huge thing, like far surpassing anything that we could have imagined mm -hmm. back in its original form. Um, you always there's a slight justification for um, having to to include it, sort of thing. So um, yeah, that is. I should actually just be a little. Well, you know, I'm in the perfect place now. It's I can I just say, oh, it's my job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it just so happens, it happens that my job is something that um, you know it just fit it aligns perfectly with all of the things that I've mm. always loved. So um, that that's that is the dream, isn't it? In you know many ways, like uh, Paul, you maybe you do this as well, but we always say to our kids, you know, you, you need to do something that you enjoy. You know, when you, when you right. get older, and if you can, you know, if you can do that, tie it in with, you know, with something you love. Like, you know, for me, I, I run a video company. I don't know how to do anything else other than make videos. <laughs> so if I didn't do that, I don't know what I'd be doing. You know, yeah. and so, swimming you know, with sharks, like, Jeff. You, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Singing, and singing and swimming. And swimming. Yes, going into Eurovision. Yeah, now that yeah, is, I think that's, that's, I think that's so important. Mm. So important to tell, tell your kids that they they can do what they you know they can. It's it's fair it's fair enough to dream about something and want to do it and to achieve it because you can and mm. um, you know you just have to work yeah. <laughs> quite hard yeah. and, to and get it it's like, and give it a go because you know like I always yeah. felt if if it didn't work out for me to make video then at least I tried and if if I didn't mm -hmm. you know I, I'd have regretted it and so yeah to g give it a go and you like you absolutely like you say you can kind of achieve anything you you work out a bit a little bit of luck as well i think maybe mm -hmm. you know timing maybe. sometimes but yeah work work at it and you know make it happen i think i came from a generation where we were just kind of we weren't really it's not like mm. now with everyone everybody has their x factor moment and you can do you know you can do anything you can be anyone you want i think when, when i was growing up it was like you just have to get a job and pay the bills <laughs> yeah and, it was never it was never really kind of like you can do something that you actually want to do mm. so that's why i think that's why i did journalism later um you know you start to realize oh actually i can i can i am allowed and i am allowed to turn mm. this nerdy geeky thing into an actual mm. career you know it's um and, and when you wanted to do that dan what was like family support like were they were they for it or you know like i remember my dad was a bit like oh you, you'll never make this work you know you, you you won't make any money from it. it's a bit scary and i thought you you're a fisherman for a living like, <laughs> travel the world fishing you know and if you can do that then you I can, can do point this, videos you know. of people yeah 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 it's strange isn't it there's mm. there's an assumption that there's certainly from our from our parents or our grandparents that you had to do a thing that was more grounded in reality, yeah. like fishing or, you know, or having an office job. Mm. I mean, that was the first thing I trained to do mm. was um, information. Mm. I, tra I, I trained it off because I just thought that's the kind of thing because I quite liked English. I thought, oh, well, that's the kind of thing I should do rather than going, oh, you know, actually aim a little mm. higher. Mm. Um, you know, and, and I was a, I would have been a lousy secretary, I think. But, um, <laughs> But of course now you've got you know Donald Noble is is there the role go. model yeah yeah in Chiswick. so yeah. Um, yeah I um I think my 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 nana was mm. very supportive I mean and indeed she helped me at the start because I needed I didn't have any money you know it was in the dead end job kind of thing mm. and I needed a little bit of money to be able to get onto the course the journalism yeah. course so she was very helpful in that respect so God bless her. Um, I think my mum always just worried that I wouldn't have enough money mm. to do anything. Yeah. Um, and the best thing about being a journalist is you don't have to have money because you just get to do everything for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it can get to a point when you become quite well known in your circles that actually when people start inviting you to things and then you get the lunches and the, you know a few, few, little, uh, few little things as well, which is quite nice. Y yeah, well, you... I mean, as I say, I, I originally I, I moved down from yeah. Scotland to London and... Uh, when I when I moved here and then suddenly realised that all of these uh, you know social events for for entertainment journalism mm. or um, whatever I was doing at the time that you know there was always an event or a launch or a party or whatever and you know like um, it was it Quentin Crisp I think used to say that, that he used to just he used to go to all these parties so that he could yeah. dinner. <laughs> and I I took it as a sort of challenge yeah. that you know there was a full bar it was and I, coming from Scotland I was like yeah I'm going to fill my yeah. boots and. <laughs> I was very small when I moved to London, and I, you know, not so much anymore. But I've certainly eaten well. They're, 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 they're always they, find the spot. Go on, sorry. Always find the spot by the kitchen yeah. door. <laughs> yeah, then find the find the spot where the waiters come yeah, out. Yeah, and you're, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Laughing. And you know, the, they they say there's no such thing as a free lunch, but it's not true. Really, <laughs> is it? Well, 
cosmically maybe not because you know then you're going to end up carrying around a few extra karma pounds, but, um, <laughs> yeah. there's yeah. there's there's always there's always karma somewhere so, i wonder if anybody's actually done that i've, I've got a few journo mates so I'm, I'm going to ask around see if anyone's actually done the whole thing where they can get through the day from breakfast 11sies lunch post-lunch mid-afternoon tea dinner and everything else in one day just on freebies by uh, by attending various clients, events, and and what have you, it must be someone. It must be someone who's done yeah. it. <laughs> or if not, then there's a challenge for you there, Darren, to see if you can there you go. achieve it. The Who C to C challenge. We should do that. We should yeah. do that as a feature for all our guests. We we'll give you a challenge, yeah, and then yeah. and then you go and do it, and then let us know how. Can you eat? <laughs> can you eat loads of food yeah. for us? <laughs> Sadly, budgets aren't what no, they used to true, be. Actually, yeah. 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 So, what was it like when you when you left uni then, Darren? Was it was it quite, how did you find it getting embarked on your career? Was it quite easy to, to sort of move into what you wanted to do? Well, yeah, I was quite lucky because I um, I when I was at uni, I was already mm. freelancing. I had already put my you know had my fingers in sort of various pies, and a lot of it was because of Doctor Who, because Doctor Who had just come yeah. back, and I I was. Um, uh, I was a Scottish news reporter for a publication called The Pink Paper, which was an LGBTQ mm. newspaper, which ran for many, many years. And so I was doing the Scottish side of things. And then I was finding ways in to do other, insta- other interviews. And so, so John Barrowman came to Scotland to open a, um, I think one of his family um, ran a supply oh, shop okay. for dis- yeah. dis- things like lights and stuff. And um, so I, I sort of said to my editor, oh, you know, can I go along and have a chat, you know, do an mm. interview? And that point they weren't, they weren't so really interested in, they weren't really doing as many interviews as they could have been. So I uh, had this very fresh enthusiasm for obviously <laughs> always with a Doctor Who angle yeah. for everything ridiculous. <laughs> so I ended up speaking to um, John Barrowman and Liz Sladen oh, quite close wow. within each other yeah. at the same time when they launched... Um, they did an invasion of the Bane. So, um, you know, I, yeah, so I just started pitching mm. things. And so as a result, I was at uni, I was doing all this, I was going down to London back and forth to press launches and stuff and doing interviews with various people. And, um, you know, and eventually I got the inevitable note from my editor to say, you know, can we stop doing Doctor Who stuff, please? <laughs> um, did, did you lose that note, as I would have? <laughs> well, it was really funny because I did do an interview yeah. with um uh, Katie Manning, who is now a very oh, dear friend yeah, of mine, yeah. and she, she was doing a play. Um, uh, what was it called? Um, it was something to do with Betty Davis, and so my my mm. in was the, the, the you know, it was it was an LGBT newspaper. Betty Davis was a yeah, you know, yeah, gay yeah, icon. Yeah. So that was my my in, and my boss didn't know until he you know he commissioned the piece. All fine. Didn't realise, of course, I knew, that um, that until he yeah. read the piece that Katie was Doctor Who fan. She was a bit annoyed, but um, I was like, oh no, it's not. It's not because of her. It's just so happens that yeah, she's in it. Yeah, just complete coincidence. But, um, it, it it just came up in conversation. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> oh really? Oh really, <laughs> Katie? You've been in Doctor Who? Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. yeah so. What happened basically was they they offered me a, a full time job while I was still oh, at fantastic. uni, so I was just finishing up mm. uni, ready to go to London for this job. And it was yeah. never a thing where I thought, oh, you know, I never I never had an aspiration to um, do a specific kind of journalism or um, or to go any specific place or anything. I was mm. just I really enjoyed being a mature student because I you know everybody else was hungover, <laughs> but I was always like I want to know the answers, and then. Um, I just thought, yeah. oh, well, I'd be quite happy to work local newspaper, um, you know, talking about cats in trees or whatever. And um, this sort of, I sort of accidentally forged my own path by yeah. kind of just suggesting yeah. and pushing. And, and then so they offered me the the role of the features editor. So, um, yeah, so I literally finished uni and I think the next week moved to London. Wow. But by that point, I'd already been going mm. up and down quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. Scotland yeah. and doing interviews and stuff. So I kind of... I, would, I hit the ground running really um and it was around the time of so yeah season three of doctor who onwards mm. uh, so you know season three season four the specials and yeah. then season five um you know all of that stuff and it was very much you know and also torchwood sarah jane so they, yeah. we were always on set for stuff mm. like that and all in like other stuff like merlin and everything oh, yeah, it was just yeah, yeah. Anything that came along, like in the flesh, being human, because it was like the big sort of mm. like push around that 
prime and there was all these things and I was like this is brilliant I'm in my element because there's always there was always some angle that fitted the title mm. rather than necessarily the person or you know but for example getting to speak to Russell quite yeah. a lot um um, Russ, sorry, I say it like a I mean, <laughs> Russell T. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Don't worry. I, I, I assumed, yeah. Um, or Dame, as I used to, when I was, I was the editor of Gay Times for 10 years, and I used to always refer to yeah. Russell as Dame Russell. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so get, being able to just you mm. know, do all that stuff, it, it was really, it was a baptism of fire because I didn't know any different. I'd never experienced this before. I'd never, you know, I, I was just a student. And then suddenly I was just doing all this stuff and, and I was just, I was just absolutely lapping yeah. it up. And the more we did of it, the bigger it became. And um, yeah, and it's crazy now that I think back, because I suppose it's the, the slight arrogance of youth mm -hmm. or slightly youth that you kind of, you just barge Stoke in. Right? Of course yeah. we should do it. It's yeah, do amazing. You, isn't it? do and everybody, think, want, um, everybody likes the fact mm -hmm. that you are giving their shows or their films or whatever, such coverage with such passion. Yeah, yeah. And that in itself, that passion is learned from reading as I was growing mm. up magazines like SFX and Doctor Who magazine mm. because they were always so in-depth and so um, tailored mm. to people like us where we wanted to know yeah. everything yeah. all the small and minutiae of everything it wasn't just some little puff piece that you get in a TV mag or whatever no offense TV mags but um, um, that was so all of that was born from mm. that and, and working on fanzines and stuff like that. I say working on writing for them and, and making mm. myself and all that kind of stuff so yeah it, it just it didn't really cross my mind not to be like that whereas i think now as i'm slightly older i'd probably be a bit like oh gosh no couldn't be that ballsy about <laughs> it but um, yeah i was, I was going to say if, if do you think if you weren't you know the age you were when you were kind of getting into things do you think you might have been a bit less kind of uh, you know just just kind of gung ho about it do you think like you say you might have felt a bit more like oh I better be a bit more you know reserved here and you know probably because I think even now there's kind of an established way that we in mm. the industry are supposed to behave about certain things and um, you know there's a sort of like a hierarchy of asking certain people and you can't you're not supposed to just text the show runner <laughs> and say oh can we <laughs> can you help me with this um, uh and yeah, I it's it is it is strange because I I would always be like, why the hell, you know? Because of course you're just a bit mm. you're young and you think, well, this is a good system. Um, yeah, I don't know. I um, I don't know. I think it um, like I say, it stood me in mm. good stead. Mm. And yeah, don't, um, yeah, you know, and also because you've known people, because I've known people in the BBC or, yeah. or Paramount or whatever for so long now, they also know that. Um, it all comes from mm. a good place. Yeah, you're never gonna. It's never a sort of tabloid mentality, or um, you're never gonna spoil anything. Yeah. Or um, well, it, yeah, you're on their side with it, aren't you? you yeah, know? And, and absolutely. That element of trust, in, isn't it? In a good stead. Yeah, it's good yeah. for you then, and it, it, it. Yeah, it's that trust and puts you in good stead with them. Yeah, yeah. As um, yeah. as a bit of an aside, Paul. No, there's another question. But Darren, how do you feel that the the you know the magazine industry has changed mm. since you you got into it like obviously you know uh like i remember my dad wrote for trout fisherman magazine and you know during lockdown and stuff it was really difficult for for that maggot you know as it was mm. for many others but so aside from that kind of thing you know how has it changed with the way you know the advance of digital and, and stuff like that and do you think you know the way you kind of got into things you know how, how would it be for someone today i think there's always going to be a, a print element mm. to everything i think I, I always say it's like vinyl yes um, you know i like that I, yeah. I, you've never told me that vinyl would come mm. back yeah it's mad isn't it yeah you know and then now it's it's, it's outselling every yeah. other format so um and that's great and i love the collect the collector nature of it because it appeals to that but that's, sort of that's fan yeah it's it's people like us i think isn't it like we've said this before paul well, look at the, the doctor who collection sets you know stick something in a lovely box you know with a little leaflet and all of that and I just take my money take it now. <laughs> you know, same, same you know same with an album and and stuff you yeah. know and you know buying a magazine and stuff it's it's something about touching it and having something mm -hmm. that, that you can keep forever and streaming mm -hmm. stuff's great but it's never it yours is it? it you know you just it's never yours it's just yeah. kind of renting you know, an ongoing rental yeah. for, for, for in, stuff in fact a, f a friend told me recently he had um apple music and he, he said you know i had thousands and thousands of songs on there and then he cancelled his subscription mm. and then he went to look at his music and he didn't have anything anymore 
because it was all gone as he no longer had the subscription. He said, turn out I didn't own any of it. And I was like, that's what CDs are for. Put them in mm-hmm. iTunes. There's, a, there's a lesson you know. to be had there. There's a lesson there, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone I'm who's a firm dis- advocate yeah, for uh, physical mm. media. I, I, I strongly, you know, um, I, I will repeat, I will keep buying, I will buy a film, in, like you say with Doctor Who, I think I've bought it in every format yeah, yeah. that it's ever been. I'm sure that the Blu-rays won't be the last. No, oh, no. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. I, I'd like to think that's as good as it would get, but there'll be a holographic projection version yeah. in another, you know, 15 it, years. It'll all be on little crystals that you just slot into your yeah. just heads or, or something. Or plug into the back yeah, of yeah. your head, you know, with a, with a cable. You know? <laughs> there won't be cables, mate. Well, it's lovely talking to you, bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's the future uh, i promise you behave yourself <laughs> yeah I, I don't i don't doubt you i i but uh, yeah there's something to be said i think you know we, we as fans mm. we, we want the definitive thing we want the complete thing we want everything yeah. we want every single you know i think they just released there's a mm. they re, they've just released the hellraiser movie the new one on this country on disc and they're only bringing it out on dvd and i was kind of like what's oh, the point of that People that want these things, they yeah, want to have the, they want the best. They need to pay more. You yeah. know, we want everything. We want behind the scenes, every single continuity mm. thing, everything. Yeah, you you want know. It all, Make yeah. it the definitive um, collector's edition or something. Yeah, Even if you stick to... another 10, 15 quid on it, it's it, yeah, it's fine. It, we'll we'll yeah. do it, you know. I mean, we were speaking did, did to... You see... Go on. Oh, sorry, I was going to say, did you see recently that um, you know companies like Disney and stuff want to kind of kickstart their legacy media mm. divisions again and start putting stuff back out for realize you know, the value of it. blu-ray and stuff mm. that, yeah they've realized because you know streaming like i said it's it's great but don't really mm. make the money you know in the same way so maybe i'll finally get one division <laughs> that baffles me that these things are because yeah. there's so many yeah. I, mean, I see these things on ebay i see people selling like you know the mandalorian or whatever mm. i'm like i know that's not mm. out of blu-ray yeah, yeah i've, so, I've seen the know, same yeah and no one's, no one's cracking down on it, and yeah. Um, but but yeah, so there's a market for it. But um, you know, I, I said this. Somebody else posted this mm. on Twitter, and I said to them, you know, well, I'm 100 percent behind it. I want because I want a proper, massive return to Oz box set with oh, everything yeah. in it. Like, you know, no brainer, yeah. isn't it? Stuff like that. Um, yeah. You know, it's just so, it's such a strange thing that everybody leaned towards streaming, mm. and everything was going to be. Ah, you didn't have to. You didn't have to fill your shelves, but maybe we want to fill oh, our shelves. Totally. Yeah. There are shelves. Yeah, yeah. Shelves, yeah. I, I, I love my shelves. Yeah. You know, my, my yeah. shelves. Yeah. Are, this, this is this is my. It's not a legacy. It's a cave. It's the place. It's it's my is my man cave. Yeah, it's full of all my favorite yeah. stuff, and I like to hold it. And you know, and it's 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 yeah. kind of weird. I mean, in my situation, right, I, I'm I'm the kind of techie, geeky nerd type you know in a relationship my wife isn't at all she doesn't do technology right apart from you know just general stuff but she has a kindle and she won't read physical books anymore she's so used to the kindle and to be fair oh, she really? does have difficulty you know with with with, with reading small print in a book anyway you know, she's got dodgy oh, eyes she's behind you. but that's Fre- freya's ears were burning yeah. and then she just <laughs> <behind you. laughs> she's outside there but for me who loves my technology and i love the convenience of streaming and everything else i i have to have a book an actual physical mm-hmm. book i can't i can read on, on on a kindle screen or something but i don't enjoy it it's like there's something lacking yeah, it's, it's just not the same it's not it? and i and i love my you know I, I've, I've got my spotify and amazon music accounts and i enjoy mm-hmm. again just plugging yeah. it into into the dot behind me but you know that piece of crap boasting at the top there but downstairs i've got my i've got my my turntable you know my speakers and my really smart headphones and that's just the sound you get from that you cannot you just can't get it from streaming uh, even in high yeah. high resolution sa- sound you audio you just don't get that that warmth and and, and that volume of sound from the stuff you can't even physically hear, but it creates a space for it. You just don't get it. I love the physical and, stuff. And it's you know, it's like a streaming 4K is never the same quality as a disc. 4K. No, it's not. It's, it's nice and yeah, you're right. It's a lot. A, a lot of it depends on the, the bit the, rate as well, doesn't it? So yeah. you know, I mean, we're getting blah blah blah. Well off track. And also, yeah. Back, if back, your internet goes down, what exactly. do you do? Exactly. You know? well, Look at Jeff yeah, at the you know, start of this podcast. Yeah, we were exactly. completely bollocksed. <laughs> we didn't know what to do. If we were in the same room together, it wouldn't even be an issue. <laughs> Every time we go out with the family, my wife plugs her iPhone into the car and she brings up her Apple Music and we're getting into a song yeah. and the signal goes. And, uh, you know, mm. and I say, 
if you bought a CD, <laughs> you'd put it on there, that, if you bought a CD, that, would that wouldn't have happened, yeah. you know, <laughs> hey, hey, and back the, in my and day. Go, What's the CD? They, <laughs> they don't know. So. Oh no! Don't start that. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's true though, because so much, so many, so many physical mm. things now. People are, people are starting to go. Well, what is that? What is yeah. a DVD or whatever? Um, but and I think I think magazines will come mm. full circle, and they'll be really. I mean, they they already are collectible. I buy so many magazines that are um, mm. ridiculously expensive. But, um, um, but there's something you know there, there is something to be said about the physicality of holding a magazine yeah, yeah. and. Yeah. Um, and it has been difficult over, like you say, like, you know, um, over the lockdown, particularly, we just very much, I was fairly new, I think, to SFX. I'd been there just under mm, a year, I think. Right. And so I was sort of stealing myself to do anniversary stuff and perhaps, you know, rejig the magazine ever so slightly or whatever. And um, then we just had to put everything on hold yeah, because yeah. it was just really about keeping the thing going. Because yeah. so many magazines, especially genre ones, they disappeared they just stopped producing them whereas we kept going every month yeah. um and look, look even that, that that in itself is quite mm, hard because yeah. nobody was making tv shows or films yeah. Yeah. what do you you know what do you write about so um i mean we did all right because genres you know we proper like proper nerds we just went you know look at the shelves yeah. we've got all yeah. these there's yeah. hundreds of millions of things we can write about so um uh but obviously sales have really suffered mm. for magazines generally uh, particularly since since COVID, um, because you know the, the footfall is probably not as much as it was. The cost of mm. living, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, magazines can be considered to be a luxury purchase. But the other thing, of course, with SFX is that it's been around so yeah. long; it's nearly thirty years. Well, yeah. Is that people kind of people have kind of grown up and moved away yeah. from it, and not and now it's come in in vogue or whatever. Everything's really popular. All of these things that, like I said before. Um, weren't cool when mm. we were young. That's it now. So yeah, it's very different, actually, isn't it? There is a magazine right there yeah. that people don't really know necessarily know exist. That's got everything in it. That's got yeah. all of mm. these shows and films and, and nerd stuff. And stuff <laughs> like that, you know, I say all of that, you know, with love because yeah. I yeah, class yeah. myself as a nerd and a geek. Yeah. But um, it's it's for me. It's just trying to sort of get it out there underneath people's eyes and say, well, look, mm. all of this stuff is here and. Um, um, yeah, so it's always a constant struggle, I think, to keep magazines going and keeping them relevant. And like you say, digital stuff has, has impacted mm. it because even quite a lot of the time now when you're working with people in the industry, they're not necessarily geared towards magazines that are produced a month in advance. Yeah, they're, all, yeah. they're all about what somebody can dance to on TikTok to promote it or, yeah, you know, yeah. or what event yeah. they can have the night before the show airs that they can have influencers turn up and you're like well actually people that's all mm. good and well for one demographic but there's a group of, group of people who just want to sit and read yeah, yeah. really yeah. in depth and, well that you know going back to what you said earlier Darren you know I think that's something that magazines will always have in in their favor is that you know like you you go online and you, you know you go to a film website or whatever and, and you read a bit about you know a new film for example and it's a couple of quotes and a few sound bites and stuff but it, it you know it's like you were saying it's a it's a puff piece there's, no, there's nothing mm. kind of meaty and in depth to it whereas that's what the magazines you know mm -hmm. c can offer and so for you know geeks like us and you know who really love the stuff that's that's where you can go you know before the you know the big old making of book comes out to, to get mm -hmm. more f from it all and and get stuck into it and great. quite often, I have to say, I I do feel like it's sort of like my, my duty in a way <laughs> because there's not there's not um, there's not always yeah. going to be a making of a book like there used to be yeah. when we were kids. There used to be the Star Wars mm, magazine yes. or whatever. Every film had a yeah. you know yes. a proper making of magazine. And these days, you are hard pushed to get four or five photographs mm. from a new film promote that new film mm. um, and you think back to the days when you know Starlog were doing these things and it would just be rammed full of pictures from aliens yeah, or yeah, Dick yeah, Tracy yeah. or whatever yeah. um, so I a lot of these things don't ever get to that part of having a big making mm. of book so I kind of think yeah quite often I go right okay there's a you know a niche genre show and I want to do a behind the scenes piece and I want to speak to people who've made the props and that's kind of almost like a lost art in a way because yeah, when we ask yeah. for it people don't understand what we're asking for and you say it's a behind the scenes and they're like yeah but it's been yeah. on and like yeah but we still want to know like it's yeah, weird exactly. because yeah i grew up with the doctor who 
mentality mm. of needing to know everything. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that is where it comes from. And, you know, and my colleagues at, at SFX are the same. We love that stuff. You know, mm. we love to be able mm. to see all the things that you're never going to see anywhere else because there's a million photographs get taken on these things or yeah. and they just never yeah. go anywhere. You think, well, what a waste, uh, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like behind the scenes filming and stuff, isn't it? You know, yeah. t tons of it. And, yeah. you know, most of it never comes out. I mean, I must say, that, you know, Marvel have done some quite good behind the scenes docs on Disney Plus, but you mm. don't get those on disc releases anymore, you know, but all, all that stuff for years, you just get a couple of seconds worth in two, three minute promos that they put yeah. out. And you used to think you've obviously yeah. filmed it all, you know, and, and the pictures and stuff. And yeah, I love it. I've seen <laughs> all that sort of stuff. Well, um, anyway, let's. Uh, should we go back to another scheduled? Go question? on, let's. Well, actually, this ties in quite nicely, actually, because I was going. I was going to ask Darren about um, being a contributor to the somewhat short-lived Doctor Who Insider magazine, and mm. you know how, how how that came about. I love that. Um, I think any mm. magazine that does giant posters of the Rani um, deserves full support. Definitely. Um, yeah. That came about because I know John Ainsworth very well. Um, oh yes okay um, yeah he, he was the editor and mm. yeah i can't remember why at that point because i was i mean i was working for another magazine at the time and i wasn't freelance yeah, yeah. or anything it was just something I was yeah. doing on top of my my normal job of editing a magazine and um mm. but you know if someone says to you oh do you want to go and interview loads of old doctor who people <laughs> you're never going to be like oh no you're not, um, you're not going to say no to that are you really <laughs> Find a way also, to make you know, it was when they were still film, they were filming um, mm. the early Matt Smith stuff at the time as well. So I was, on, I was on, like I say, I was on set quite a bit actually. Um, for whether it was for my day job or whether it was for Insider, I would be yeah, yeah, yeah in yeah. Cardiff quite a lot. And um, um, I always loved Cardiff. You get off the train and you just feel like you can breathe. The air just feels <laughs> pure, yeah, um, clean, clean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so. I think, I think, and I'm sure that some probably, probably would correct me on this, but I, I was led mm. to believe that at that time, I think the BBC were, were perhaps looking to take Doctor Who magazine back in house, and I think that they oh, they right. made they were making Insider as a mm. sort of like this what they kind of want it to be like, and I think that oh. quite rightly a lot of the show the you know the, uh, the current and previous showrunners said mm. oh well you know if you don't, if you take away the license from Panini we won't. Um, we won't work with you. I mean, this is all all hearsay. Yeah. It, could, it could all be yeah, absolute yeah, nonsense. Yeah. But as I understood it, I think Insider was it was supposed to only be available in America, and then they started slowly bringing it out here as well. Mm. And um, yeah, that's right because I remember seeing it advertised. I think maybe in the Titan comics, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, that looked cool, mm. but it wasn't readily available over here mm. to, to start with. It was a lot. It was a lot simpler, I think. You know, it was. I think Doctor Who magazine was, as I say, that like you know, growing up, it was quite a dense mm. publication for me, and I got uh, it was I got quite a lot from it, and it was always my kind of inspiration. But I was always trying to give too much copy to our designers, and I'd be like, "Oh, can we just make the text smaller?" Um, I think there was one point <laughs> Doctor Who magazine it felt like you had a magnifying glass to be able to read it. Yeah. <laughs> So Insider was kind of a simpler version of that, I think. Mm. Um, and it's sort of a more of a a gateway for newer fans rather than sort of bogged yeah. down with too yeah, much complicated yeah. older stuff or, you know, really in-depth features about things. People were like, what the hell is this? Yeah. So, but I don't know why it didn't last. I think perhaps maybe mm. it that all tied in with the, um, the Panini license being renewed to Doctor Who magazine. Um, and perhaps as well the I don't know maybe the audience was slightly waning for publications because um, eventually Possibly, yeah. Doctor Who Adventures Doctor Who yeah, Adventures yeah. went away as well um, but I worked for Doctor Who Adventures quite a bit as well actually mm. um, and that was always that was always great fun um, was that again yeah, freelancing uh, it? yeah it was freelance I, I look back and think God I did a lot of I did a lot of work I did that I didn't necessarily <laughs> need to do. But I liked it, yeah. and I knew all, I knew all these yeah. people. Like I knew John Ainsworth, and I knew um, Paul mm. Lang on Doctor Who Adventures, and um, you know they're friends of mine. And yeah, I just thought, oh, this is great. I'm getting to really write about things that I really love, and 
Um, mm. Yeah, I just don't know. I just didn't. And, I didn't really question it really. I thought, oh, this is yeah. this is a good thing to do. And yeah, I suppose you're getting so. involved in that world as well. So you're meeting people, you're making connections, yeah. you're getting your, you know, you're getting your foot in doors, and you know, just sort of building, mm. bu- building your your friendships and your alliances. And... Yeah, I think it, everywhere I've been in life, I've always had this kind of Doctor mm. Who group. It makes it sound like a sort of self-help thing, but it's not. Or maybe it is, you know. <laughs> well, maybe it is, yeah. <laughs> C- Com- so, Companions Anonymous. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all, yeah, there's always been a group of people that, that are just, mm. they're friends of mine, and our common link is Doctor Who, and um, and that's great, you know, because we don't just sit and talk about Doctor Who. I mean, obviously we do, mm. but not just that. Um, so, yeah, it was just it's just always been the way that Doctor Who has opened so yeah. many doors and not not in an intentional way that I've kind of gone, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to use this as an, ex, as an excuse or yeah, a reason yeah. to try and get to this. It just, it just happened to be that I just meet all these people and, and, yeah. mm. you know, we end up doing bizarre things together and, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm so, starting so, way so, back from banding. Some, yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? Uh, sorry, Paul, what were you going to say? I'm just saying, you know, it just from starting way back in fanzines to, to you know, to, to now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's, it was never, a, it was never a like, this is, uh, this is my path I'm going to go to. It was just, I kind mm. of just drunkenly stumbled yeah. along it and laughed along the way. <laughs> and and, and it's um, worked out, worked out happily. It's all, it's all worked out fine. Um, yeah, it's. Yeah. Uh, and no sharks it's, involved it's either. No sharks. Well, no, except for no. the flying one in. Uh, Christmas Carol. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, were you always? Let's go back to the the beginning bit. Were you always a fan of Doctor Who? And and um, you know what? Uh, which I think is the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, that we're what, that, what, yeah. Uh, inspired. You know what? What was the moment for you that you were like, oh, th- this is it. This is you know my thing. Oh, I don't know. Gonna... I know. I There's remember my first memory. Yeah. My first memory is the Marshmen coming out of the water in. Full circle. Oh, full circle. I think, yeah. I think, I think anything coming out of water is quite scary, um, and so memorable. And I, but I, I remember the Davison era. Mm. I mean, so I must have been. I must have. So yeah, it must have been season eighteen, that I must have been just watching it on and off. Or I don't we really, because I just always I think I always loved science fiction. Yeah, which is handy considering. Um, so <laughs> I don't know. Whether, I don't know whether my my mum got me into yeah. it or just maybe thought I would like it. I don't. I can't really remember where it came from, but I just fell completely into it, like properly. Mm. One of those things where I was just, from want of a better word, obsessed with it as a kid, and um, you know had the books, what little toys there were, and mm. um, and even then it wasn't. It still wasn't that big a thing you know like when it came back in 2005 it was huge yeah yeah and, yeah you know i mean probably i'd probably say mm, probably the, the highest it's been since maybe dalek mania I'm yeah i sure. think you're probably right um, actually yeah yeah there's probably um, some stats somewhere which maybe bear that out aren't they? but but it yeah, feels like right it. it yeah <laughs> yeah so um so yeah i, I but i think yeah it, it wasn't till probably like the sort of the fan gene in me kept growing and growing you mm. know i was buying the magazines buying books like you know getting that encyclopedic knowledge of everything and then i think it was season 25 i started recording it off the telly okay so like, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah and i think that's what tipped me um, yeah. into the proper like, i don't know that something <laughs> just sort of clicks in your brain doesn't it you're like I don't, it's hard to explain <laughs> it. yeah yeah yeah, I, th- I think you're right. So actually, I, I just... I'm, I'm sort of seeing parallels with with uh, the kind of stages that that I went through as well, and it was it is very similar. I mean, slightly slightly earlier. I think I'm probably older than you guys, but um, when I started getting, you know, when I when I got to the point where I thought, well, I can call myself a fan of this, it wasn't any conscious boundary that you that you cross. It just seems to suddenly, you know, it just seems to be that you just grow into the program and it and it kind of ever more steadily 
consumes you in a way, yeah, but you, you enjoy it. You, one, and one day, well, it's all you think it, about. It is because, yeah, and I remember when yeah. when I was at school, and I was in, uh, I was, I was in my sort of, was it the fiftieth? Yeah, it was fiftieth. So I was doing uh, GCEs and what have you. And part of what I had to do was uh, was was build a computer database, and of course my computer database is going to be on Doctor Who. Why not? But it helped me get through that 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 subject, and it made that subject in vo- en- enjoyable. And it, in the meantime, then like you, it's like I'm starting to record the episodes on 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 off the TV as well. So I think when it got to Colin Baker. Um, with season 22 with the Attack of the Cybermen and all that that's when I started really obsessively setting the video and watching it at the same time and then really just waiting and to get back onto it to make sure I got the very start of it and the very end you know so it's properly bookend there's none of this sort of it cut out halfway through it had to be complete yeah, yeah. <laughs> otherwise there's there's trouble or maybe that's just I me I don't know no, I think that's, that's quite, that's quite a regular story. Yeah. I used, to, I used to, I used to obviously film, film, um, tape everything yeah. in the sense like right, right to the final mm. credits. And my father just couldn't understand. I don't know why he thought that that was important or <laughs> made any difference. Or <laughs> any money. <laughs> he thought we should not do that. But, um, mm. but I also because I because that day, you know, those days we didn't have computers in our pockets and we didn't have you know yeah. think videos in our rooms or whatever so i i would um i would i would hold a cassette player up to the um the t- the tv oh, and to the record tv speaker yeah 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 so then i'd be able to listen to the episodes but i couldn't watch them oh, just, so i yeah, I yeah. Word for word. um and actually it's weird Jesus. because um there are certain points in doctor mm. episodes where i hear a sort of phantom in my head because at the same time as i was recording it off the my mum yeah. would shout you know can you walk toby please or whatever and that's <laughs> drop he didn't just do it. um so this, uh, little brother or something though <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah um there are certain things that because i listen yeah. to them so much uh, you know that I, that I have a sort of my own i wish i i wish i still had those tapes actually it's a shame but mm. um yeah. you know as you go yeah. through you a little, little of, bit of, of childhood captured there yeah on tape yeah yeah, but um, um, so we well for lost generations sorry. as well, isn't it? Like the um, the, the 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 missing episodes reconstructed from off air recordings yeah. by people doing exactly yeah. that. Literally hold the mic up yeah, to the exactly. telly yeah. and record it onto yeah. a tape, and and we're all we all enjoy the benefits of that. So it's it's weird in a yeah, way exactly. that these Thinking little is, kind yeah. of geeky idiosyncrasies that we all do, you know, in, to some degree is uh, it, it's actually pays off later down the line you yeah, know it's come back to help yeah us later, rather than yeah. the corporate decision of let's junk everything because nobody's yeah, going to watch yeah. it ever again you know that's the rational sensible adult corporate decision to make <laughs> so did you say you, you're going to you've got it print this week yeah um it's because of easter we have to go early ah uh, go early right. so, um yeah <laughs> So yeah, it's you, you seem uh, quite hard. calm. Can... Yeah. Well, I've been, you know, you said my first rodeo. I've done this so often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, we don't. We still don't have a cover. Um, you know, I mean, we've got options, but um, yeah, it's that. I, yeah, I used to get really wound up about making magazines, but um, SFX. Mm. I don't know. SFX has been a bit of a lifesaver for me. I have to say, it's. Um, Really, yeah. getting to do this is just. Mm. I, still, I still don't really believe that I get to do this for my for my job. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. man, just yeah, just enjoy it though, because you know yeah, it's brilliant. It's you know? Brilliant, yeah. I, I think yeah. Do, do you know. I mean, SFX is is one of those magazines that I I think. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure anyone who enjoys genre TV, cinema, books, games, everything else, must have at least read at least one issue, if not many, over the years. And I, I, I remember, because was it mid-90s when it came out? Was it 95, 96? It's, it's, something? Like 30, 30 it's coming years, up 30 years, yeah. isn't it? So yeah. it probably was. And I, I remember when I, I, I started buying it because, 90, must be, yes, 95, 96, because it was when they, the Doctor Who TV movie was in, was in production. Mm-hmm. And and I just left university for about a year or so, and uh, and I just I just remember seeing it 
in in Doctor Who magazine and in SFX, and I just wanted as much information, as much on set photography, as yeah. much behind the scenes, as much Paul McGann and you know filming in Canada and all the rest of it because it was suddenly just there and Bad. you know and SFX was I think they had a couple of exclusives which I'm which I think Doctor Who magazine were a little bit pissed off about actually at the time. I'm not sure maybe maybe that's just my memory sort of playing up a bit, but. Do you know, um, I remember buying SFX, you know, over the years and uh, bought it once when Buffy was on the cover, Sam Michelle Gellar, and uh, my mum saw it in my bedroom and she picked, <laughs> yeah, and, and my mum picked it up and she went, what's this magazine, sex? And yeah, was, <laughs> <laughs> looks a bit like sex. <laughs> yeah, I said, no, no, that's not what it's called, they've just, they've just put her head, you know, <laughs> conveniently in the way of the bottom of the F, so I had to explain yeah, that I wasn't we're buying still a magazine that, yeah. sex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think the the, the type the, the the fonts kind of change a little bit now, so it's not quite as you know obviously yeah, kind, yeah. Of, well, kind of sex and everything else. I, so um, I have been on. trying to get that change since I started. So um, I, I oh, think, really? Bless them. I think um, Ian and well, particularly John, who's our um, who's our art um, art director, he uh, probably yeah. doesn't because it's going to be too much work. But yeah, it's um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I got, I've, you know, it's, just, it's been that logo for a while, and I think it's it's time for a bit of a yes. refresh. Mm. But, uh, it has been. It is sometimes people do say, you know, um, production people will come mm. back and say, well, you know, we're not quite happy because it looks like this, and you're like, yeah, I know, I can't change that. <laughs> it's nearly thirty years old now, but maybe I can find a way. Yeah. Thirty years old, yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. 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 There's, there's always a way. So let's go to um, a question from one of our Twitter followers. Now, Jonathan Wilkins, who is at JDog underscore Wilkins on Twitter, asks, Darren, do you still have Carol Ann Ford's costume from Shakedown and who has been your most difficult interview? Well, that's two questions. Let's take the first of those. Do you still have Carol Ann Ford's <laughs> costume from Shakedown? I Did do. you ever have it? Is this a, a modern yeah. myth or what, is it true? What's it the is story true. here? <laughs> it's absolutely true. Um, I went to the Dreamwatch convention in, I want yeah. to say, 94. Oh, my um, goodness. And part yeah, of that. I remember that. Obviously, uh, you, don't know, you probably mm. remember. They, they were going to do um, they were going to do downtime, and then they didn't do it, and it got put back, I think. So they had to, because they'd built this convention, Dreamwatch convention, mm. um, around the launch of uh, this new film, they didn't have the film, so they had to go and make a new one. And um, they did Shakedown, which is... I don't know if you've ever seen it, but mm. I love Shakedown. It's so yeah, good. it's Santarans. Yeah, I love it. Um, uh, Caroline Ford is having a gr good old chew on any scenery mm. she can get hold of. I love it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, so they had a big auction, and um, um, yeah, I got Zarel's Emerald Green Liquid Lame catsuit. Um, Fantastic. And then. <sighs> Not so. This is so bad, but I, I mean, I still have it, but it's not in the greatest of conditions. But she did sign it for me, but I don't, yeah. I can't see it anymore because I, I did, I did used to wear it out clubbing in Edinburgh. Um, <laughs> Brilliant. It was particularly good for Abba nights, I have to say. You know. Um, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, so oh, I, I do still have oh, that. And, um, mm. Yeah, it's uh, it's it, that is the truth. Um, I love Shakedown. Brilliant. I think it's great. I love Downtime, but Downtime can be a bit long. Yeah. Have you watched I, I, that? I haven't seen both of them for, for a long old time, actually. I, but I like the, the Santarans in Shakedown. They 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 they, they, they redesigned the, the 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 faces on them, didn't they? The, the heads and I, I kind of like that. They yeah. they're sort of like um, you know, when you compare modern day Klingons to the Klingons of the nineteen sixties, it's mm -hmm. it's almost like that kind of thing. Like we don't talk about that anymore, you know. So, so, <laughs> yeah, so tell it. us also, Darren, about your um, your Dalek collection. Is it is it quite? Oh, we, uh, we need is to it quite go impressive? back to. Hold on, we need to go back to who was your most difficult interviewee. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, we on, will we that. will beep uh. out any names. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, I mean, I don't think it's any secret that Stockard Channing and I don't get along. <laughs> Um, but from Doctor Who, I don't, I don't think that there's been anybody um, particularly mm. difficult from Doctor Who. Everyone's been really quite lovely, really. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd think, you'd think, particularly because when you're a fan of something and people say, I never never meet your idols or mm. whatever, and you think, yeah. oh, God, you know, should I do it, should I not? And um, <laughs> when it becomes part of the job, you don't really have a choice, you know. And um, I, I don't think I've ever met anyone in the Doctor Who world that has been mm. a, a problematic or, you know, there's been some hilarious interviews over the years that for other people... But um, I have thankfully never had. Everyone's always come from a, from a place of of love. Um, yeah, yeah. They, they all so, seem to, don't they? Like you know, they they've all enjoyed being a part of it and the fandom, yeah. and you know. Yeah, the people we've interviewed, they've they've all been lovely, haven't they? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is which is always good. So, so Darren, about this Dalek collection then. Yeah, you, you seem concerned that uh, who underscore FX on Twitter only wants to marry you to uh, inherit it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm glad I do. I do. Doesn't everyone have a Dalek collection? <laughs> it, just becomes, <laughs> it just becomes part of the, uh, the, the sort of the background. Yeah. That's probably just an assumption, isn't it? That um, any, any Doctor Who fan... Don't mind the Dalek. <laughs> <laughs> they, just, they just know that that's what they're going to get when you know when you die. Um, they're going to be like, yeah, I'm going to I'm yeah. I'm have to leave express notes to say like, do not like, don't just discard these things because they're all precious things. Yes, <gasps> um, yes, it's true. Yeah, because so you know, how many make up the think, collection? Oh, mm. But um, actually, you know, you go, well, this yeah. is actually very rare, <laughs> you know. Yeah, whatever. It's a day we know it's or... not tat, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, the, the little yeah day poles and the roly kins. If yeah. you've got any of those things, but you just imagine, you know, I just imagine my my mum sort of finding these or something and saying, "Well, that's going in the bin," and you're like, "Oh my god, yeah. no! Oh, my roly kins have gone. That's terrible. No." I um I Do want you know them all, when... all left to auction, and then that's all going to go to the dog trust. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Sometimes I've um, I've stumbled upon old Dalek toys in like antique mm. shops and stuff. You you guys might have done. I I live in Horsham where uh, Raymond Cusick was from, <laughs> and um, the museum here has a little um, display uh, bit, and it's got a a Tom Baker annual and a couple of old Dalek figures in, and they're they're not in the best condition, but it's it's quite nice. I think they need to update it a little bit actually. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's fun finding finding old ones around about. Yeah. So ha- how many make up your collection? I was going to say, I do probably have a lot more than would be necessary. And I've got a lot of TARDISes as well. Oh, have you? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. I just... <laughs> I I refuse to feel guilty. You, you finally, you, no, you, there's, there's no guilt? Yeah, yeah like, exactly. Yeah, there's they no, are. There's no guilt when I was here. A kid, it no, wasn't cool. you know, no, we're, we're all the same. Do you know, mm. my wife, when when we'd not long been together, we were we were not married at the time, but she bought me, um, you know, a, a cardboard TARDIS cutout thing. You know, it wasn't quite life size. You had to kind of slightly crouch down to, you know. Oh, so it was a big thing. It was a big, but yeah, thing, a big one. A yeah, 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 yeah. And um, she said, oh, I'll, wow. "I'll let you put it up in the living room." And I thought, oh, I got to marry this one," you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure where it's gone now. Actually, it might be in the loft somewhere. But yeah, now, now we've got kids, it's, it's not allowed out. So, <laughs> but you know, for a brief while, it was prime place in the living room, and people loved it. So when was I was good. a kid, I, I used <laughs> to you, sleep in the um, mm. the original Tardis tent. You know, the I think it's the Decker. <gasps> Decker. Right. Was, yeah. 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 We used to put a cushion inside it, and I used to go to sleep in it. So I can still smell the plastic and imagine that sort of slight blue <laughs> wow. from the little window at the back yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, there's a light coming. And, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and I think that eventually one day, in fact, fairly recently, I mean, it survived quite a long time and then it, it ended up mm. on my, my balcony, which makes me sound a lot grander than I am. Um, it's more of a fire escape. <laughs> than and um, I think it just blew away one day. So, I mean, just oh, imagine no. that some, um. some poor person in London was just having a lovely day and then just got, got whacked hit on by the, the head TARDIS. With old plastic, you know, TARDIS tent. But um, yeah, I always kind of think, oh, I should probably buy another one. But then I just kind of go, well, actually, do I really need one? Kind of yes. <laughs> yes, you um, do. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Sometimes it's, it's not need, it's just it's, want. Yeah. I want to know. It. Yeah. No, that's it. It goes beyond a want. It's a, you know, can't can't do without it. So um, is there anything that you need to complete your Dalek collection at the moment? Like, what's, what's the grail? <laughs> I don't have that anymore. I don't... Um... Oh, does that mean you got it? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't, it's not... It's just... Well, I mean, here's the thing. Like the other day, I went looking for a. I was so I, I've been looking on um, eBay for ages for a particular horror because I'm really into horror mm. as well. For a particular horror action figure, and it's always really expensive. And I was like, oh god, you know, never going to get this figure. And then I was just moving things around on top of <laughs> one of my shelves, and um, it. I've got it. I didn't really, <laughs> didn't really realize I have it. So, the yeah, I I kind of I'm just at a point now of kind of thinking. Um, I mean, I shouldn't laugh about this, but I'm I'm in the process of of emptying my mum's house, and um, every time mm. I um, I go through a room, I'm, and I'm just and I start laughing because I'm like, why have you got all this stuff? And mm. so I'm, I'm now at a point in life when I kind of think, oh, I don't want that. I don't want somebody else to have to do that for me, mm. um, which is yeah. a bit maudlin, but you know, it's it's a fairly recent thing. So, um, but yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't I don't really have any sort of holy grail. Doctor Who items, I guess. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to think now. I mean, when you're a kid and you, when you're a kid and you want everything and you can't have it, you know, because you're a kid. And then when you're an adult and you like, I can have anything I want. Yeah, pretty much. As long as I pay for it, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, Remain within the law. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I just, uh, mm. you know, especially when since the, you know, and then goes sound really old, like since the internet came along. <laughs> You can find all this stuff, and you, yeah. yeah, you just kind of, I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? Um, mm. you're, you're trying to, it's an, almost trying to buy back a nostalgia, like you know, buy back moments and yeah. time, you know, by buying these things, and it's a strange thing. I, and I'm sure there's well, a and whole. It's, it's stuff that makes you happy, isn't it? And I think you know, as you get older, and you know, life, life can get harder, and the world is, you know pretty awful sometimes you know the, mm, these things that, that mm. for these things that bring you joy i think it's important you know to uh when they look cool so why not you know? <laughs> and like you say now now you know you you can get anything you want except hot toys they're really expensive and i can't keep buying them but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so i had when i was a kid i had the um, yeah. palatoy canine and i oh, loved right. it and i you know i loved it you know, I loved it to death, basically, because, you know, you mm. had a little record inside that you would slip, flip over underneath. And um, um, and I think I still have somewhere in my um, Mr. Trebus empire, somewhere I've got the um, the shell of it, I think. But um, when they brought out the character options one, you know, like the big remote control camera, yeah. I mean, the, just the, something, there was something, I don't know, like, something just came alive within me. Like, I was like, oh, <laughs> Like this is insane. Like, they're bringing this out. It's what 2006, and they're bringing out a yeah. giant remote control. Giant remote yeah. canine, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so there's certain things which just sort of push a button in you, don't they? And like, went yeah. from when you're a kid, or um, yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. Um, this kind of weird. actually, do you know? What? I just I'm gonna grab. I'll say. I'll show you this. Hold on. One sec. I'd I'd love a really good. Um, uh, Paul? <laughs> What's he done? For anyone who's right. anyone who's listening and not watching, Paul has just smashed his his room up. <laughs> Left, right. Check this out. Hold hey. on. Hey. Size of that bad boy. Look at that. Look at him. <laughs> Love it. He's been. Does it talk? What? It did Can talk. I don't know. Yeah. There's a button there somewhere. No, battery's battery's long gone uh, at the bottom of that. But it did, it, it's it was one of those remote control ones, right? Yeah, so it yeah. trums around on the floor, mm. and I I got this. I think this is I can't remember when, but I know my my youngest daughter Freya was 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 quite young at the time. I think she's about one, maybe two years old, and I used to steer it around, and she used to freak out really? big time. It really scared the <laughs> life out of her. I can't and of course, it's just the flashing why. light yeah. thing. And, you got Nick Briggs's voice going exterminate because it's the deep booming yeah, Dalek yeah. commander <laughs> voice or, or master, yeah, whatever it is. So that that's my one and only Dalek actually, really? but he's a big boy. Yeah, yeah. 
You're kidding. Yeah, How can you have one Dalek? Because he's big enough for all the Daleks. And I have, uh, I see. I, I think for me, actually, it's 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 the Doctor Who books have always been the thing that I always wanted, yeah. and that that's my collector um, mm. obsession, if you like. You know, so I've I've got a whole stack of Target novels and New Adventures and the Eighth Doctor books and you know all the DVDs and the Blu-rays and you know it's like <laughs> my wife said to me the other day when the season, season nine box set came through and I, 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 was, I go yeah I've got my season nine and she's gone like you need it I went well I do <laughs> I do need it yeah, absolutely I need it yeah you've got enough DVDs oh, but I don't have this no. DVD do I you know no. yeah no 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 yeah what were you gonna say Jeff was the thing that you were looking for oh um so, well I'd love um the the um like I can't think it was the junkyard Dalek, you know, that you had in the Chibnall oh, era, the, the yeah, black one that they made. I've, I've got the Funko Pop of the, um, you know, uh, Recon Dalek, Junkyard Dalek, whatever they called it. Um, and, and I'd love, a, you know, one of the black versions of it. And talking to the mm. Funko Pops, I, I really love that Doctor Who range, and it's, it's sadly incomplete. They stopped making them. You know, I, I got a couple of the older Doctors, but they, they stopped. I've got one and four. I think and nine, and and then they stop doing them. So if anyone from Funko is listening, get back on it. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe that will, maybe that will become a thing again because once there's once it's, once the the series is reinvigorated, mm. people will be looking for ways to. I really, I really do, really do believe that's going to happen. I think people are something you will start seeing that kind of merch again, and um, then you, there just needs to be more of a demand for it. I think. Yeah. Mm. Because I think because it's been all over the shop for what, for one or, or however many reasons, or you know, with COVID and all kinds of things that have happened, um, yeah. and it not being on a regular, you know, every year, whatever, um, and it not being really of a merchandisable yeah. standard, you know, you, you're, not, you're not really going to get an interactive frog on a chair toy. No. Although I, so, I'd buy that, you know. I'd, I'd buy Although that. Although it would. Yeah. <laughs> if they did make it, people would buy it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, it just kind of lend itself to that, really, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? You know? <laughs> but I think that will I think that will come. I think that they, you know, mm. people start going, oh, actually, we've got licenses for these things, or mm. they'll probably need to renew them and things like that. I mean, it seems odd to me that there's just, I mean, there's a Funko of literally everybody else. Yeah. I think if we wait long enough, there'll be Funkos of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've made a I've made a digital version of myself. I just need to get. You I know, bet you have, haven't you? I have. Yeah, <laughs> he has as well. I, I know just need has. to get it turned into plastic. You can do that in um, Funko Hollywood. You can get yourself turned into one. Oh, you really? Just, you can yeah. actually do that, can yeah. you? Yeah. Oh my goodness! So See, long, I've, I've never got a long into way the Funkos. To go, though. Yeah, yeah, I do, is, yeah, yeah. I, like, I do like Funkos. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, Darren, you've also worked on a couple of Doctor Who books, um, the the Doctor His Lives and Times, which was a great book, uh, and the brilliant book of Doctor Who, which I think I think I had that that one as well. So, tell us a little bit about those, how they came about, and you know what what you went through to kind of you know to put them together. Um, I think was Brilliant Lives. Was that not James Goss's book? Was it? Yeah. Yeah, James Goss and um, well, I can't remember. It was someone else as well, Sorry. isn't it? Did, didn't you contribute to it though? Yeah, yeah. But James yeah. is a friend of mine, so um, yeah. that's that's how basically. I think I said to him, "Oh, I've got this if you want it." Mm. Um, uh, and I think because I, I, I also I know Clayton and Gareth, um, known them for for a really long time, um, and. I can't even remember how that came about. Like they just said, I think maybe because I was doing stuff already with the, with, um, yeah, with yeah, yeah. Matt and Arthur and Karen because I was constantly doing stuff with them. Yeah, that's um, what brilliant. The brilliant book was was it was there just one or was there two of them? There was two. I didn't yeah, do the that's right. One. Yeah, uh, I remember it was a really good book, and it, well, I was disappointed that they didn't carry that on because mm. I was kind of thinking, oh, this would be great to have. This is a sort of you know, a a per season book sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was really good. Yeah, yeah. So that that's um, how that came about. It was just basically, you know, uh, I think that I think Clayton just said, "Oh, you know, would you do these?" Um, and I said, "Oh, yeah, totally. You know, I don't mind. I'm I'm speaking to them all the time anyway." Mm. And um, I just assumed that I was. Do- I mean, I said, "Oh, you know, I'll do it for nothing. I'm not really bothered." Mm. <laughs> um, and um, and then eventually you know, he was like, oh, and here's the payment. And I was like, oh, wow. You know, he was even, like, even, better. 
getting to do but, Doctor yeah. Who stuff <laughs> and then getting paid for it. I know it's kind of yeah. crazy, but um, yeah, because yeah. at that point I I was seeing them uh, there, mm. too, uh, Karen, Arthur, and Matt quite a lot, you know. Because we were doing stuff for Insider, we were doing stuff yeah, for yeah, yeah. Um, the magazines that I was working for, um, and then you know the book stuff as well. So mm. yeah, I, I, and my my friend who did the he, my friend Luke did the PR for mm. season five onwards. He worked for Premiere at the time, so we were always out um, in London and stuff. And um, yeah, we we just. Yeah, it's weird, and they would always, they would always. It's weird now because I just, I yeah. just took it in my stride. But mm. you know, I suppose, it's, I suppose it is a bit. There was one time I turned up actually to meet Luke, uh, something unrelated. Then we went yeah. to Soho, where were we? Soho Hotel, and he didn't tell me that he was with um, um, Matt and Karen. Oh, I turned up and I was wearing because the, the, he'd given me a BBC hoodie at the time. Uh, the, right. the, the, the tour. Yeah, the tardis on the front, and I was just like. I can't fucking oh excuse my French. I can't um I can't I can't turn up like and I think in my bag I had an action yeah. figure of Smith and I was like, Oh, you could have talk, could have warned me, but <laughs> so I had to sort of like quickly remove the hoodie and hide the yeah. figure turn it inside out to hide the figure. But um yeah, nerd problems. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah but We've all been to, there, Darren. Yeah. I used to see them quite a lot. Um um, and they would yeah. always, Matt, Matt and Karen would always call me Dazza, which was the only, they were the only people that I would allow to do that. Yeah. Um, but I think the last time I saw Matt was where I was in a hotel in LA for a Wonder Woman junket, and oh, okay. uh, and I happened to go, I was down at breakfast, and we just bumped into each other, and he was like, "Oh, Dazza," and I was like, "Oh, great, right. well, that's um, um, brilliant." And he was there for Morbius reshoots, and right. oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a yeah. Marvel, I'm a Marvel fan. Well, mm. I'm a fan. I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm an old school fan. Let's say, I, you know, I've always been a fan. That's right with us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, rather than one of these, I just like it now because everyone else does. Yes, I was when... So I was Sorry? Say, were you there when you had to explain what the Avengers are to people, you know, who didn't know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> OG. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so he was there to do yeah. Morbius reshoots. And at that point, obviously, nobody had seen it. And it was just pre-COVID. And, and I was enthusing about, you know, Spider-Man and, Mo and Morbius and everything. And he just had this kind of really sheepish look. And he was like, oh, well, I really hope you like it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> And weirdly enough, I actually really did. I thought it was a really good movie. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I thought, because people were saying how bad it was, and actually I, I really enjoyed it. But um, I, I haven't seen it yet, actually. No, I, I, seen I think it yet. I, there, I, there I, does I, seem to be a swathe of negativity about it, which I don't yeah. normally respond to. I'd rather just usually make up my own mind. Own, but, I, mean, yeah. I, I like Jared Leto. You know, he's always pretty mm. good. And, you know, the, the concept of it looks good. So, yeah, I must catch it at some point, yeah. Um, we've got some more questions about SFX in a minute. We've just got one one Doctor Who one here uh, quickly. And um, what would you love to see uh, in the future of the show? And what's exciting? Yeah. What's exciting you about what's coming next? Oh wow! <laughs> what would I like to see? I th I'm just so happy that um, that there is such an excitement and enthusiasm for yeah. it um, because. I remember those days, the early days when when uh, New Who began, and everyone just just being everywhere, and every and just it, it was incredible. It was an incredible time, and everyone talking about it and making the newspapers and all that kind of stuff. So, for it to have that buzz again, mm. so exciting, um, and that's on a personal level before you even get to um, an SFX level, because it was quite difficult. As with, um, I think any any publication will tell yeah, you, yeah. Doctor Who magazine or the TV listings, mm. or whatever. It's quite difficult to do. It was quite secretive for a while. So whereas I'd been quite used to quite a lot of access through the end of Russell's era, and then through Stephen's time, um, you know, we were quite spoiled in that res respect mm. that we would get all this stuff, and then it was very quiet, and you couldn't. You know, you couldn't really talk about it, or you couldn't get mm. access, or whatever. Yeah, what what so, caused all that? Do you, do you think? Why? You know, just just to keep secrets, or yeah, yeah, I think so. I think I think that was that was the reason. Mm. But um, I think there's a there's a you can take that too far, and yeah. mm. people kind of like the, the general public kind of go, oh, is that still on? <laughs> like, That's the um, danger, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. So um, 
I think I'm just excited for the fact that, uh, I mean, I love Russell. I've, I've known him for years through working in, um, uh, through, in gay press. Um, yeah. And he and I, <laughs> this is really bad, but when I started at SFA, he's one of the first people I told when I got that job, I was like, you're never going to believe, you're never going to believe they've given me this job. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. And so obviously he, he and I were chatting, but yeah. been, ch- been chatting about like other shows and mm. um, we talk about television quite a lot, but, and just do- what was happening with Doctor Who, because there was one time when we did, um, I, can't remember, I can't remember which special yeah. it was, but we did a Dalek, Dalek cover and the day before our cover came out, the Radio Times had the same picture on the cover. Oh. And um, Russell was quite surprised at that. And um, so I would always just tell him, like, everything yeah. was happening with, like, what was happening with, what I couldn't get for Doctor Who and, like, mm. you know, what we couldn't do. and But also other stuff like, you know, what was happening with Star Trek or whatever. Yeah. And then... Um, and then it was really funny because I, I had no idea. And I don't think he did either until you know, long till during the lockdown that he was going to come back to it. We were just talking about it like it was a mm. like fans do. Yeah. And, um, so then afterwards, he was like, when he, you know when he came back, I was like, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> just told, I've, been, I've been saying all of these things to him yeah. for like a few years or whatever. He's like, I told Julie everything. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, but he he's such a um, an advocate for SFX. He's mm. he's a reader. He's a fan, um, and he's he's genuinely he's such a, a good person. He's yeah. been very yeah. to me personally over the years. So um, I'm just glad that it has a team of people who are mm. trying to exp- ex, um not exploit what's that sort of word I'm looking for they're trying to engage with every angle that they can yes yeah. pull in all the opportunities yeah. right and, and you know, explore everything that it can do now because yeah they're looking at not just tv stuff yeah, but yeah, yeah. As well and and you know how 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 media has moved mm. on you know and and um you know i have such fond memories of that whole era yeah 2005 onwards and that how 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 it crossed over into the mainstream yeah mm. that you know i really hope that that's something that will happen again and yeah, uh, yeah but i don't know what i would like to have as a spin-off yeah um, i was gonna say do you do you think we're gonna see any spin-offs oh i think i think that's definitely gonna happen yeah um i think you know because what was it russell said that in gq didn't he like he said that he he looked at um yeah Star Trek yeah movies. And I, and I think there's a lot of buzz around uh, Gemma Redgrave yeah, being mm, in Cardiff, like a, isn't there? You know, a unit a unit series sort of would thing. be good. Yeah, she. They're filming. They're filming. They're not filming any specials, but they've done those, haven't they? They're filming. I think just so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are you asking us for? You know more than we do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've, I've not. I've not been on uh, on set. <laughs> so, um, so Russell, if you're listening, yeah, yeah. Like, and, and, and invite uh, us as well. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll tag we'll, along. You yeah, know. we'll come as well. I can, I can drive. I can get to Cardiff. <laughs> I'll, I'll make the tea. I can do yeah, really yeah. smashing cups yeah, of tea. I, I do good well, coffee. Here's, you know. here's the thing: they were filming down the road from me when they did um, <gasps> the um, yeah Finland specials, and I didn't oh. know. So I thought it'd be really weird if yeah. I was just, like, in the crowd going Russell, Russell. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's not really unprofessional. And, um, Hi, Russell. Do you remember me? It's yeah. me, Darren. It's me. It's me. <laughs> He'd have been like, "Oh God, no, it's him again." <laughs> um, so I, did, yeah, I didn't, I didn't bother. And I know that all yeah. the like, fans there and everyone was filming and watching stuff. But I, you know, I was just as, as as geeky as anybody else. I was just getting it all online. I was like, "What? Mm. Thinking this is amazing." Yeah, and it's so yeah. weird because it literally is just a few stops away on the train, and I could have gone. But, <laughs> But for the first time in my life, because it's actually my professional mm. thing, I thought I can't really do that because it's you know it's a, that that to me is a bit tabloidy. Um, you know, if we're not invited, to, <laughs> yeah, to, to, to paparazzi, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't know. I think it's weird because um, they did have that unit. They had a they had a universe before MCU was a thing, mm. um, and without even sort of knowing it, and that mm. was brilliant it was just yeah. so so ahead of its time and um but now gosh i don't know we were watching um some like speaking of james goss and uh yeah 
was I was at his house at the weekend watching the canine series. Not just not just the whole thing. We were yeah. just a few of us watching various things, and one of them <laughs> was the canine series. Um, well, the the animated one, the, the Australian one that I, yes, that one, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Um, just you know, we were. I mean, we, it was all in the background. We were having a laugh, but um, not, <laughs> not at it. <laughs> it was all like, shh, shh, shh. Canines on, canines on. Shh. Anyone speaks, I kill them. <laughs> I think it was fine until he transformed into the new one. Then we were all like, oh no, exactly. <laughs> um, what is that? We were sort. Of, we were kind of discussing like, what would you like to mm. see? And I, don't, I just don't know. Like, I think it's, it's wide open, isn't it? It can mm. be pretty much anything. I think something like Absalom Dark would be amazing. Ah, oh, Dalek Killer. <gasps> adult, like Torchwood was an adult show. Mm, if you did yeah. Absolute Dalek Killer, that would be amazing. You don't have to have, it doesn't have to be this bogged down with... All know, the continuity now, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, could mm. have, you can have a monster story. Yeah. Like, it doesn't need to have the Doctor in it or, mm. you know, the, like, like Star Wars is doing to sort of greater or lesser. Mm, mm. I think... The thing, the brilliant thing is, I know, I know that they will do something that we none of us would have thought. Well, of. Yeah, and, we'll expect, uh, yeah, yeah. Because they know now how things have changed in mm. the streaming with um, you know the Star Wars stuff and Star Trek, you know, being that thing that it is this juggernaut now. That who would, have, I mean, I've always loved Star Trek, but who would Same, have thought? Yeah. Who would have thought it was going to come back this way? Mm. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, it's I just I, I can't. But I, I, to be honest, I I always thought Star Trek had kind of just petered out in the 90s and early 2000s with 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 enterprise which i i mostly liked but it just it's, channel 4 killed it channel 4 i'll tell you what any 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 makers of genre tv right put anything on channel 4 you are killing the show completely because you just know what's going to happen they'll 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 give it some kind of you know oh we've got this new thing and it's going to be great and we love it and it's going out prime time all the rest of it mm -hmm. before six episodes are up it will disappear till like 10 o'clock 11 o'clock at night and then before the before the second series has even got off the ground it's been delayed and then they show it like three o'clock in the morning on yeah. some random day and then that's the end of it and that's exactly what they did with yeah. babylon 5 with i mean enterprise with batwoman mm -hmm. and yeah, I yes. just uh, sorry, but, a little bit of a rant there. But no, no, just, it's true because it needs to be day and date. You can't. Yeah, need, absolutely. Yeah. Even now, when you've got um, mm. a card going out in, on a Thursday in the states and then a Friday in the UK, it's, it's already causing. You know, some people don't, can't wait that twenty-four hours mm. because they don't want to have it spoiled because that's the way we are. Exactly. So yeah. It needs to be. You know, you know, there's some some kind of event. There's event television like Game of Thrones and things like that mm. where they. Literally show it at the same time as they do in America. Yeah, yeah. And you used to watch it in the morning, or you know, I, I it's still all changing, and I think that streaming is still changing. And I think that the partnership between mm. BBC and Disney is brilliant. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just going to open. I think people aren't really thinking about the positive sides of mm. it. I mean, apart from the fact that it's going to have you know budgets coming in, and you are mo more than likely going to get spin offs and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, I think the possibilities for it are so much more positive than anybody could say. Like, you know, I, I hear a lot of people complaining that there's only mm. eight episodes when actually there's nine if you include the Christmas special. Mm. Um, I think that's only going to get more, you know, I think there yeah, are yeah. other yeah. things, but I think they, I think what's, what the, I think what's going to be really good about how this happens is I think that they will have learned, like Russell, mm. he's, he's one of the smartest people. He, he knows his shit, doesn't he? Yeah. He really does. He has, he mm. is going to have seen how everything has happened in streaming and what's worked and mm. what happened and you know weekly drops and not doing too many episodes. He knows, he knows, he knows exactly what he knows how to play it. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I just think I, I, I could sit here and think, oh, you know, we could have this or we could have <laughs> thing or we could have absolute dark or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something will happen that nobody will have yeah. seen and we'll just be like, oh my god, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Right. yeah. You know, there's so many options now for companions and, and mm. all different things. And mm. like the way he did it before, you know, like with, um, you know, the season uh, four finale. Um, yeah, that was great. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 There's so many possibilities, but, um, you know, mm. and I think, you know, a Dalek series just would be great. I think, that would be know. awesome, wouldn't it? That that would almost like realise Terry Nation's dream mm -hmm. of a of, yeah. a of its own Dalek thing. You know, Dalek Empire, I suppose, is the closest we've got. With, you know, with big finished stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. the closest we've that, got to that. There was an animation series 
on Oh yeah, there was on there, YouTube, wasn't it? Ago, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember what that was called, but yeah, that, that was. I think right, it was just yeah. Daleks or, or something, wasn't it? Maybe, Some, something yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I say. Do you know what? It's it's uh, almost like I, I don't know what it's. Maybe you know more than I do on this, right? But it, it does feel to me because when you're talking about Star Trek and Star Wars, and we've got all the MCU stuff going on as well, it's it just feels like we're in another. Can you call it a golden age? I don't know, but there's there there is such choice mm. of all this genre stuff, and you know, again, when you think back to like, you know, early nineties, late eighties, early nineties, when nobody was making sci-fi anymore, it was it was dead and buried. Doctor Who had been cancelled because all we apparently wanted as an audience was soap operas and game shows and shit like that all the time, and you know, you know, it, it and and now we've got so much choice. Yeah. And you know, with all with all the wealth of content, there's going to be an element of it which is perhaps not that great. But it's always got its audience. There's always an audience for that yeah. stuff that you know perhaps it doesn't quite hit the levels that a lot of us would like to see. You know, it's not perhaps Game of Thrones type level or Doctor Who level or Star Wars. But there's little shows in there somewhere where where they're pulling people through. Mm. And there's so much of it now, and so much of it actually really is quality stuff yeah isn't it? yeah you know it, it we've never had it so good, good. N- never had yeah it so i mean good in many ways mm. you can imagine you can imagine my problems at sfx now <laughs> yeah what what do you cover yeah yeah there's just too much yeah. Yeah, but, you know Talk, <laughs> t- talking of the uh the mag again uh, yeah but how, how is it all going at the moment like y- you know is it difficult picking what you put in an issue uh you know how, how do you kind of you know yeah how do you choose and you know do you get content easily and you know what's the sort of general situation yeah all at the I think, yeah i think i think you know we're still you know we can always we can always do mm. with a few more readers and if anybody wants to pick up a copy but um it's, is it easy to get content um well i mean star trek the latest copy out now folks uh, there you go. You, you can to... have that one oh. for free, Darren. Hey, hey. <laughs> Where's <laughs> yours, Jeff? <laughs> it hasn't come yet. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Liar. <laughs> Sorry, Darren. Go on. What are you saying? <laughs> um, I think, uh, you know, Star Trek particularly, they've been mm. great to work with. Um, you know, they've been, they've given us so much stuff. Oh, you've had um, some cracking interviews, Stanley, mm. and features on, on Picard and the rest of them, have you? Just you wait. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, this is this is this is what I want to do with Doctor Who um, mm. later this year because we've not been able to do that, and I want to do my thing on it. You know, Ooh, um, yeah, uh, and um, and that is you know I've never my whole life has been building up to being able to just write about it all the time, <laughs> and to be and to be allowed to you know to yeah. not have a teacher tell me that I shouldn't be writing about Doctor Who or you know whatever. Um, so we're build you know we are building to that and. Um, you know, um, I am actively speaking with the BBC quite a lot, Ooh. and and also um, and with Russell, but mainly that's gossip, um, and not about <laughs> the show because I don't actually ask it. Um, I don't, you know, I just think that's a bit rude. Um, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, unless it's, unless it's in a room to specifically do that mm, for, mm, for mm. the day. Um, you know, we did. Um, you know, we spoke to him. Ian interviewed him. Um, Ian, the deputy editor of SFX, mm. he interviewed him. For in this issue about Sarah Jane. Yeah, um, I was reading that. Oh, yeah. Right. It's such a good interview. Um oh, brilliant. And yeah, uh I'd love to be a fly on the wall. Mm. Uh, but um it's just, even the stuff in the head there that he was talking about how they want they can't do a children's show or they want to do yeah. it. Yeah. Goes on about the, the, when it, you I was thinking about that when you were saying about um you know the spin offs and stuff and it's like you know I was thinking back to Russell's saying about the money, that's the fact that BBC just don't have any money. I don't think people realise that, you know. It's... Well, that's why the Disney thing is here, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. why they're doing it, you know. Because now they're going to be able to do these kinds of things. and mm. you know. But also, perhaps now isn't the time to do, you know, I think there's going to be a Star Wars animation soon just for children and yeah. um, maybe that's not the right time for a Doctor Who to yeah. do that. Maybe, it, you know, but who knows? So, a couple of years, yeah. Um, um, I've completely forgotten but you asked me something quite important I think but um, I, it was sorry, just well. sort of about <laughs> how's it going wasn't it <laughs> yeah, how's, effects, it, how's yeah. it going in, in general how is it going um, <laughs> yeah um, it's how, how you asked me how easy it was to get access mm. sometimes it's very difficult um, but I think because I've known these people and I've worked with them 
for a long time over other magazines, not, mm. not just SFX, mm. is that I kind of came in to SFX with an expectation of how the access that SFX should have. Mm. So I think that's moved things ever so slightly industry-wise for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's good. Um, uh, that's more of a sort of theatrical thing rather than television, because I think with television, um, like historically, SFX has always had a great Doctor Who mm. relationship. Um, uh, and I, you know, obviously, really, I really, really want to expand on that as much as we can, and because you know, as we, you know, as we're like fans, no stone left uncovered. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's kind of the way that I've trying to be trying to approach things with Star Trek. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, some some people are, yeah, some people are, are, are easier to to get on board with you and say, you know, like, <laughs> trust you and go, yeah, we get it. Like, just, yeah. you know, what, what can we give you? What would you like? And other people are a bit like, no, there's no access or there's no photos. Mm. So people think that it's just this kind of easy thing that we do all yeah. the time. It's actually, you know, it's a, it's a lot it's of admin. Hard. It's a yeah, lot of yeah, 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 work. Yeah, and there yeah. with the sort of quill writing. <laughs> <laughs> I really love sci-fi. Yeah. Um, <laughs> most of my day is spent, you know, organizing yeah. people and, and discussing options of what we can and can't do or mm. uh, you know and but always at the same time i'm trying to be mindful of not ever spoiling anything or revealing anything yeah or, yeah, yeah. Um, you know not jeopardizing the relationship that we have that's, that's you know, it, yeah. it's a nearly 30 year old magazine and i yeah. don't want um i don't want to annoy anybody but also there's a certain if you're a fan of sci-fi or horror or, or fantasy you kind of expect mm. to see that thing in SFX, you know? So there's a lot of pressure there for me to yeah. go, well, we have to do this, you know? Yeah, or, yeah. We can't. I need to explain to people that we did try, but yeah. you know, for some reason, <laughs> this blockbuster movie. <laughs> yeah, it's quite visible, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's really weird when they said, oh, there's nobody available. You're like, really? Not even the caterer? Um, <laughs> so, it's so strange, but, isn't it? Like, why would yeah. you not want to get Oh, it's, no. it's all about it's all about online or yeah yeah, yeah. or TikTok yeah. or you know it's so. the, the PR machine isn't it you know you you have to sell a pr and it sounds really horribly commercial but you know these people have billion dollars to 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 they got to make that a break even yeah. and the more people that know about your film or whatever it is the more chances there are of people actually going out to see exactly, it exactly yeah. so you know if your pr's not making the most of every opportunity every platform every publication every social media everything and talking to the people who can activate all those routes to yeah. their market then you shoot yourselves in the foot, yeah, guys. Ab frankly, absolutely. so speak yeah. to Darren, yeah. and if Darren's not around, speak to me and Jeff. We'll yeah, do it for yeah, you as well. We'll, we'll Don't do worry it, yeah. about it. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's it's you know it's it's uh, in many ways it's the dream job. Mm. But also at the same time, it's um, sometimes it can be quite uh, yeah. complicated to navigate various things because also you're not just dealing with you know for example like Doctor Who. Mm. Thank goodness, BBC. You're just dealing with the BBC. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, it's, it's always been that way. And um, but when you when you get involved with bigger thing, not, yeah. not, not that I'm saying the Doctor is not big, but there are more people involved in there. Mm. As there's, there's more, US yeah, there's more vested interests, right? There's more stakeholders, and so it's all over the place. And you're yeah, going, yeah. Under, so we're trying to ask people to do something quite simple that they don't. Mm. Kind of What's what's this? It's, it, it's on paper. Yeah. <laughs> Who are these guys, Bob? Do we gotta talk to them? You gotta talk to them, Steve. They're gonna do the feature on our new film. Really? Ah, oh, what the hell? Come on, I, you got twenty. Uh, you got twenty seconds. Yeah. Is it like that? Is it exactly like that? But it is. Well, I don't know if the accents are quite like that. But no, I, I thought I was in nineteen uh, twenties <laughs> Hollywood. Then give up. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Imagine that. <laughs> I'm gonna. If we were in the 1920s, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who is it now, Rick? Well, some guy from the papers, John. No, no I'll just I'll stop. I'll so stop now. I, I'm just going to paper over that and go to a, a question <laughs> here, Darren, from uh, Andy Drews with a Z on Twitter. Uh, he right. wants to know oh, he uh, images, what, what happened to that guy who made up silly bits of retro <laughs> sci-fi merch for the magazine's red alert <laughs> pages. I don't I know. Question. I think. I think he just we lost him with that. <laughs> <laughs> lost him in the wilderness he's somewhere. He's in a storeroom somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, I I love his his stuff. You know his stuff, right? 
on uh, Twitter. He's like, the oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, we were just, it was just one of those things where we were, I think we dropped in pagination. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's always, the, the, we're trying to, you know, the budgets, because I, I don't ever want to sort of go, oh, you're just doing a picture. Can we pay yeah, you? Yeah. You, know, mm. a, 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 you know, we don't have the biggest budget in the world as it is. So, um, yeah, we did some good stuff with him. And um, I, every time I see something that he does on, on Twitter or whatever, I just think it's such a hoot. Um, it's absolutely bonkers it is yeah yeah um yeah maybe one day we can get him to do something else I'm <laughs> about, yeah. we will. i always end up going back to my old faves there you go you see you try something new and then go back to go what, back to what you, know, you know there's nothing wrong with that can we can we do our new feature we have one new oh, feature before hang, before you oh, shoot off hold on oh, i just oh, go on. Like to what? very quickly i'm going to double this question up uh, what have you enjoyed the most recently and what are you most looking forward uh, to? I knew you wanted to ask this question. <laughs> what, in life? or well, you, can, you, you can answer about life if, if you want, you know. <laughs> Would you mean Doctor Who? Uh, no, I mean, any, any... Generally, kind of, so, yeah. so with, with all the movies and TV shows that you've been writing about and watching. Oh. And, and you could tell right. us about Doctor Who as well. So this has now turned from two questions into possibly a six-parter. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what have I enjoyed most about Doctor Who recently? Um, oh God, you know what? I think I have really started to get so excited about it. Mm. Like really excited about it. And, um, you know, there's been ups and downs over the years. And, um, but, oh God, I'm, I'm going to sound such, such a fanboy, but <laughs> Go I for it. I genuinely love I lo what Russell does is so good yeah. um, and what that that point in time 2005 onwards was just mm. magic mm. Um, so no pressure if, <laughs> if, he, if he messes it up <laughs> over between us um, <laughs> we're <yeah>. finished <laughs> I am I'm, I'm so excited about it and it's weird because yeah. I'm, I'm in a position now where I've got to be professional about it but at the same yeah. time yeah. I am a fan you know, I am a fan, and and you you can't you, you don't want to get sort of too, yeah. You you don't want to be seen to be being mm. a bit because almost you feel like people are being oh it's not being it's not being very professional. But you're like oh my god. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I think that helps because I think the yeah. spirit of that and it, it infuses SFX. Yeah, you know, right, it's, yeah. it's like the, the friend of mine is, um, you know, he's a, he's, he's, he's a big music journo, but he writes for the electrical uh, retail industry, which is really dull, right? But but because he's such a muso, right, he, he, he sneaks in like Smith's covered out, uh, Smith, uh, Smith's songs, right, titles and Beatles titles and David Bowie references and various other things just to kind of, and, and you know, his the, the spirit of his editorship gives the magazine a personality and I think it's the same with you know with with you and SFX mm -hmm. and you know all the contributors, all the other editors, and everyone. You know the whole team. You can tell that they're fans. The fact Nick Setchfield is still writing for the magazine after after so many years. You know I, I've I've kind of been away from the mag and back and away and back and you know his name has always seems to have been constant throughout the whole yeah. thing. You know the fact you're always writing books and you know the reviews are always opinionated, but they're full of energy. You know, and it has a personality, and I think that's that has to come from being a fan. You can't yeah. you can't make that stuff up. And yeah, you. you that's why do. I think yeah. a big reason why it's it's lasted thirty years, yeah. and and suffered, you know, through COVID and and various other you know economic pressures from from the wider industry. The you know the whole idea of information now, which is available at the fingertips. So by the time you've done an exclusive, it's already splashed across Twitter and mm -hmm. TikTok and Facebook and everything True. else. But the magazine still persists because of you guys putting it together. Yeah. Well, I have to say, I'm so, I'm so grateful to be a part of this title and part of that team. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I I bought the first issue on my way mm. to a Star Trek local group um, yes. when I was in Edinburgh, uh, watching Voyager. Like a pilot, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, black and white, yeah. white because it was an NTSC conversion. Oh, never uh, the same color twice. Yeah. So, uh, so I've, I've always read SFX, yeah. and yeah. Um, you know, um, and to be able to you know, the, the passion that people like Ian, the deputy editor Ian Berriman, mm. and um, Nick Fetchfield, and John Coates, who's the um, art editor, art director, sorry, um, they 
I'm just really grateful that I'm yeah. able to work with people who who get it. You know, it's mm. it's a really it is such a it's such a privilege to be able to to work on that title. Mm. And, and everybody who I love about it as well is that everybody that's that's been involved with it over the years, yeah. and the previous years, they all come back together. Like they all they all oh, still speak. really. Yeah, that's yeah, brilliant. That's, that's not that's not a normal thing on magazines because people <laughs> they really yeah. don't. There's, yeah. there's you know, I've I've seen a few in my time, and and the fact that these people, these guys, all still get along, and um, and and, and you can it's lean brilliant. on any, you can lean on any of them and say like, oh, can you help me? I need to know about this, and yeah, it's yeah. like a hive mind where they, they where they all come together, yeah. and like, and it's great. It's I've never known anything like it. It's um. And and, be, and like I say, we're, everyone's genuinely a fan of stuff. Mm, yeah, that's, that's a great that's thing because great. we, as much as we're writing about it, we genuinely love it. Yeah, we're not, yeah, there's no yeah. um, there's no cynicism there in that in that respect. You know, we're not just doing it because it's the job. We're doing it, we, and we gen and we, we we nitpick about the silliest of things that shouldn't really matter. But we do. That's it, what fans they, do, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, they do to <laughs> fans. So, um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so sorry again, I've forgotten what your you there was a no term. no. It's, oh, it's just what, what am I really enjoying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what are you looking um, forward to? Uh yeah. Well, so I said I was looking forward to the whole Doctor Who mm. thing. That old thing always comes back. Um, I just, yeah, I'm so excited. I can't. Wait. At some point, <laughs> I've, I've been sort of tantalised, carrot on a stick, of being able yeah. to go on set, and um, uh, at some point soon, I'm hoping that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, not just once, but hopefully quite a lot. Um, you know, I've been hearing, as mm. I'm sure we've all heard the rumours about the TARDIS set. And that everything. is massive. And if it is, <gasps> if it is, drones. if it is, drones. Like, yeah, drones, drones, amazing. Mad. See, see, it's so exciting. Um, so yeah. that's, I think I'm genuinely looking forward to that. But um, the thing I've loved most recently has been Picard because yeah, you, oh man, yeah, people throw mm. the word cinematic around so much now for anything, any TV show that, that has a drone. <laughs> no offense, Doctor Who. Um, any TV show like that, everyone's like, "Oh, it's cinematic, yeah. cinematic." Actually, they're not all that cinematic. But Picard is cinematic. Excuse me, um, I'm not getting emotional. I just had a hiccup. Um, <laughs> it, um, it, it is truly, truly great television, and it yeah. presses all the right buttons, mm. but not, it not, it's not, it's not just fan service. It's mm. quite films on it. Um, and it's it's a really beautiful character piece as well, I mm. think. Mm. You know, it, it, to be honest, though, just to let you know, I haven't seen all of season three yet, so I'm just I'm still kind of leisurely. I'm I'm not binging it. I'm just leisurely working my way through. So I've, I've literally only done two episodes. So please okay. don't spoil it. <laughs> I was say then be careful because people will spoil things. I know. I've yeah. been I've been trying that, to avoid as much of it as possible. I haven't even read your bits on Picard yet. Yeah. <laughs> no, so. Be careful of that too. That, that um, feels like you need to mute those words on uh, Twitter. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah because there's a twenty-four hour gap between it's when it's aired in the states mm. to when it comes on Paramount Plus in the UK and Prime as well. Um, there is still the 24 hour gap of spoilers basically yeah, yeah. and you know I mean yeah. no, no one's saying that you should be on the internet but we can't really avoid it these days but um, mm. so I think that's been that's been the biggest thing I've also really loved Lockwood & Co because it did have a good doctor oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, do yeah. you know I, I, I started watching that, that but um, mm. it, it didn't I thought oh, this would be really good they didn't quite grab me I, I found it a bit Ooh. overly serious uh, when it shouldn't have been uh, maybe I need to stick with it should I stick with it, Darren? I loved it, and mm. you can imagine how many things that um, that I watch now. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's I like, watched a lot before, but now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now it's the job as well. <laughs> yeah, if if you if you're liking it, it's got to be something special. So really. I really, because I just mm. again, I kind of went, oh, this will be like another young adult Netflix mm. show, and um, I hadn't read the books, and now I've got them to read because I'm right, going okay. to be good. But um, you know, it was. It was one that did completely mm, bulk mm, me. Okay, I'll, I'll, really, I'll go back really to it cool. and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give it, it. Yeah, give, give it, it another go. go. Right? Um, Can we do well, our new feature? Yeah. We have our new feature because we, we we're cracking all the time. We've done loads yeah, actually. Yeah. So I'm sorry about that. No, no, it's, no, it's fine. We love it. Really good. <laughs> you know what it's like for content, Darren. The more you get, the yeah. better it is. <laughs> 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 but we do have a, a brand new feature, ladies and gentlemen, dear listeners, and Darren, you are uh, in the privileged position of being the first of our very special guests to um, partake 
even well, unwillingly in this we, new feature. The new feature is we didn't called. Want to use the word victim. <laughs> Don't use the word victim. I told you not to use that. It's all Sorry, in language, you Jeff. Did, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Our new feature, ladies and gentlemen, is called dun, 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 the Grand Serpent's Asteroid. So if you remember, at the end of Doctor Who Flux, the Grand Serpent, evil person that he was, was abandoned to his fate in lonely space in an asteroid, literally in space with nothing, with, not with even nothing. a TV or a book to read. So what we're going to do, Darren, is put you in a very similar position. However, we are not going to be quite so callous as to leave you with nothing. We are going to let you have some books, and there's a TV there. There's even a Blu-ray player, so you can take your favourite things. However, you can't take everything, my friend. So I'm going to read you some choices. You tell me which of the following are you going to choose. You up for this? Yep. Just yes. Uh, I hope, I hope so, because um, our... Uh, our end of the show isn't going to work otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> you might ask if I went, nah, see you later. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, fucking my, doing that. Uh, my, to my be fan, continued. <laughs> my fan gene kicked in and I was like, I can't leave anything. I have to have everything. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, let's yeah, see. Yeah. Let's, let's, put, let's test that fan gene right now and put it under some pressure. Okay, Darren, so the first choice you've got to make is dun, 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 your Dalek collection or your Star Wars comic collection. Which are you going to take? Oh, oh, oh! That is a hard one because I think I would get more not enjoyment, but I would have more mm. active brain active because I'd be able to read the comics. Yeah, the Daleks probably wouldn't serve much of a purpose apart Unless from trundling them around the place i suppose and enacting various battles yeah. unless there's ebay in the uh, in the cell and i can there no isn't eBay it's no. just literally an yeah. asteroid in empty space for which you will spend an eternity upon it so choose do, wisely um, do any of the dalek head parts come off to open a hollow body in which you could insert comics <laughs> i'm not allowing therefore, that i'm not allowing that getting no, around stop. the restriction jeff, no, jeff. <laughs> You're supposed to be on my side, mate. I am, sorry. Yeah, no, you have, you, I, you have I, to pick one or the other. Yeah, apparently. I think I'd probably, I would have to leave the Daleks. I think yeah, they sad Daleks. It hurts me to say it, but they so, they serve no actual purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Can't read Doctor Who fans. Star Wars comics are awesome, Jeff. Honestly. Okay, here's the next one. You are allowed to take with you, Darren, one complete, and I mean complete, series one to the final season of one iteration of Star Trek. But only one. Which is it going to be? So I, I can have the, the entire thing. The you can have thing. an entire OG series, an entire Next Generation, or Voyager, or Discovery, or Picard. Or which which one are you going to go for? It's going to be Voyager. Really? Yeah, my favourite. Ah, I love Voyager. Is I it? Love, yeah, I love Kate Mulgrew. Yeah. I think I'm stalking her now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've made my mark. She, um, she's wrong. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I love Jerry Ryan. I love. Mm. Star Wars. Yeah, it just it just reminds me of such good times as well. And, yeah. You know, moving the franchise on. First female captain. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I loved it. I. Yeah, I know that there are other things that Deep Space Nine is like a, you know, amazing and everything, but. Um, Voyage is fine. Voyage is great. Okay. I, I like Voyager. Yeah. Yeah, but although bear in mind, it is the only, I believe, it's the only Star Trek uh, series which hasn't yet even been upscaled to full HD, is it? It's still in standard fuzzy definition, so you're going to be lumbered with that. DS9's not been upscaled yet. DS9 has, I'm pretty sure it's in HD. It's not on Blu-ray. <gasps> Is this? I am yeah. sure. I don't know. Yeah. We'll have to check that, but even so, Voyage is the one you're going for, which is fine. That's all good. Okay, you are also allowed, because there is actually a music uh, CD player thing on there. No streaming, but there is, uh, there, is, <laughs> there is a turntable. There's a turntable, not a CD, a turntable and an amplifier and some pretty wicked speakers. But you're only allowed to take one album. What's it going to be? Ooh. I think we're going to give me a choice there. No. Um, Okay, that's sometimes there's a choice, but yeah. sometimes there isn't. Well, the choice is you can choose from whatever. <laughs> yeah, he's made it bastard hard this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. See, bastard head. That's me. Should it be the pescaton or? Ooh. No, I'm kidding. It wouldn't be that. <laughs> I think my favorite album yeah. of all time is uh, Three. It's called Three, and it's by Shakespeare's sister. 
Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's probably yeah my favorite album of all time. It's ah. when it's when it's when they were, she was just by herself, so it was just mm. Siobhan. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but um, gosh, yeah. I ain't heard anything cool. from those guys for yeah, years and yeah. years. But it takes me back there. Now, what would you yeah. choose, Jeff? What would be your your album? Oh, jeez. Uh, uh, it would probably be. I don't know, Actung Baby, <laughs> maybe. The Witch, sorry? Uh, Actung Baby. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or maybe How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb. I do like that a lot. Mm. Mm. I, yeah, Actung would be a good one. I, yeah. I could I could live in eternity with Actung Baby. I'm trying to yeah. think of a way I could class all U2 albums as one You can't, album. you can't, you can't. So... <laughs> Like movie, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the box set, yeah, yes. <laughs> the complete U two, yeah, complete that anthology one? that I've just made. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could do like greatest hits, couldn't you? I suppose, which which probably would get around all that. But yeah, okay, yeah. so okay, you're also allowed to take with you a one, only one, um, horror movie. What's it going to be? Oh, oh God, I love my horror as well. So. Um, I might give you a chance to rescue another one in a second, but let's let's go with this one first. A movie. It's probably going to have to be Halloween. Oh, this really? Like, do, 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 do. Ah, okay. Yeah. Good choice. Yeah. I'm, I'm also a massive yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street 3 fan. Ooh. Um, yeah, I quite like that one, actually. That, to me, yeah. was quite... It's almost five Doctorish in a way that it brings mm. people back. Um, <laughs> I've never thought of it in those terms before, but now you mention it. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh gosh, I'm sure there's gonna be something, some kind of screamingly obvious horror film that I. Well, I, I would pick a scream film. That's what I'd go for. Would you? Yeah. I don't know which any one. particular one. They're, they're all good. Like, like for me, they're all hitting mm. a, a a high mark. Uh, maybe, maybe five. I thought it was really clever. Okay. And, and have you brutal. seen six? I have seen six, which was which was extraordinarily brutal, uh, but I really like that as well. Particularly the way it uh, kind of homage the entire series as a film mm. and in in world as well. And and uh, that was it was smart. It was good. Yeah, I like the new uh, the core four. They're pretty good. Interesting. Yeah. What, what would you? No, you don't get to throw it back at me. I'm asking the questions now. <laughs> think, do you know, do you know, actually, I think I'd probably go for something. I'd probably go for actually Hellraiser is at the front of my okay. mind at the moment. I, I really like Clive Barker's, you know, horror stuff. And yeah, uh, right now I would choose Hellraiser. So that would be the one. Okay. So getting into the, the, the last couple of these now. So one sci fi movie. Only one again. What's it going to be? Aliens. Hmm? Aliens. Boom. I think actually that would be mine. To be honest, when I was thinking of this earlier, I mean, I, I love Alien, the first one. I, you know, really, Scott's is just a classic, and it's just brilliant. Aliens but it's it's it. the comfort zone. It's it's the the comfy sofa for me. I, yeah, it is good. Yeah. Mm. It's, yeah, it's so good that film. It is. Same for you, Jeff. Um. Or would you go? Well, I'm a big Cameron fan, so um, Indeed. I, I am thinking, how could I make the Cameron anthology? But I'm going to, um, I'm going to throw. Oh, I in... shouldn't have asked this. I know what going to say. <laughs> okay, I, what I'm going to do because I know the next question. <laughs> uh, my sci-fi movie would be Alita, and my fantasy would be Avatar. <laughs> because <laughs> it's not quite sci-fi, but it's not quite fantasy. Fair enough, mate. Fair enough. So yes, as Jeff said, one fantasy uh, movie you're allowed to take. Are we classing superhero movies as fantasy movies? Oh, yeah, we could actually. We could do that. Yeah. Because then it would be Batman Returns. Oh, that, is <gasps> a, that is the best Batman. Is it really? Yeah. Uh, yeah it's a great film. Yeah. Like, so. It's just brilliant. Incredible. Yeah. I did. Um, I, I I I watched a few. Actually, no. Started last year. I started watching all the Batman movies oh, again. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Because yeah. I was going to buy. Yeah. I was going to get the, the the Pattinson Batman movie. So I thought, you know what? Because I've seen them all, obviously. But I thought I'm just going to watch them all back to back, near enough. And I did. I, I got through two, sometimes three a week. So it's almost back to back. And I tell you what, I don't think there's 
well, I know there is there is one clunker in the whole lot actually, but it's it's but Batman Returns is just it's another level compared to any. It just towers above them all, really. I mean, yeah, it's it's so unique. Yeah, I love you the know? fact that it basically sort of completely changed the whole franchise because yeah, yeah. The, and know, it's. It's but Tim Burton it. unleashed, isn't it? You know, you can see him trying a few things in the first Keaton movie, but as soon as he gets Batman Returns, he just goes for it. Yeah. Big time. And it's just unstoppably brilliant and mesmerizing and everything. Yeah, I just I love everything about it. Mm. I, you know, the, the, the thing about duality for all of the characters and yeah. the score, um, the sets are amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Master camera work, the, the 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 stylistic way it kind of foreshadows so many things within the movie. You know, you get um, Selena Kyle shot in such a way that her glasses look like yeah, cat's eyes yeah, in a mask yeah. and stuff like that. And he's playing with the images and the iconography throughout for and interweaving it. It's such a clever, clever visual storytelling it's movie. Brilliant film, yeah. Just yeah. Oh, you set us off on that one now. Yeah, we. We, uh, yeah, that's good. So here's one where we're back to a choice of one or the other. Um, you might not like either of these, but you have to pick one because that's the law, frankly. Um, is it going to be Buffy or Smallville? Buffy. Oh, oh, not even any question there. Straight in. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he's thinking about it. That's, well, that's not even a question. I thought that'll challenge him. No, no. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. Buffy all the way. Um, Buffy all the way. Yeah, I mean, Fair just enough. a game changer, game yeah, changer. Was, I mean, and yeah. also, you know, inspirational to Doctor Who. Yep, um, very much know, so. Yeah, to, so it all ties back. But um, yeah, Buffy's incredible. It's mm. uh, game changing television. Same for you, Jeff. You pick that. Uh, yeah, although I, I might say uh, I take Angel because I felt Angel was probably a little bit stronger. But there would be no Angel if not for Buffy. That's true. Not. So I'll, I'll so, happily take Buffy. And, and I can go. bend the rules by saying, you know, there was crossovers with Angel, so therefore I have to have Angel as well. <laughs> you get a little bit of Angel, I suppose. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just destroy you two completely and just just for the shit hell of it, I'm gonna take Smallville because well, cause I love it. That's, Which that's is your, also influential your, in its own kind of way. You know, that's your um, hill. That's your no, hill. I don't die. care. I'm gonna die in that hell. Okay, so here's uh penultimate one now. One of these two, if you please. Shaun of the Dead. Or Day of the Dead. Oh, Day, because I have to be classic. Ah, <gasps> oh. I love Shaun of the Dead. I love it. Yeah. Um, but Day, I have to go with the original. I think that's the nerd gene in Is me. It? That, yeah. I d- I d- I d- it's, it's one of those films I can't watch that much of, though. No, but... it freaks me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, it, it, it seems to it seems to cut right to the bone, and it's you know it's the whole kind of starkness I think of it all, and the just but yeah, it's oh it's a great movie. Don't think it wrong. I I think I love it, but yeah, mm. some films are like that, aren't they? They're they're great, but they're a hard watch, and uh, you know you, you can't do it that often. Yeah, sometimes you need that though. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But maybe yeah. not when you're stuck on an asteroid, yeah. <laughs> surrounded yeah, by empty yeah. space. Yeah, you know, as you are. Bleak, okay, yeah. so here's the final one, and what I think is actually the most difficult of all of these questions that I've put to you on the Grand Serpent's asteroid. It is here. One, you are allowed to take one full season of Doctor Who. What's it going to be? Because now I'm thinking, oh, classic or new. Mm, um, yeah, you can't have one of each. It's got to be just one uh, throughout the entirety of the whole thing. The new new who is longer, <laughs> so maybe <laughs> season four. Season four. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Donna Donna Noble season, Donna isn't Noble. it? Yeah, yeah, with Davros yeah. and. Journey's End and yeah, all yeah, uh, Stolen Earth, yeah. Ah, Stolen would, Earth, that's the one. I would have said season twenty five, um, mm. because it's got the Happiness Patrol in it, and that's yes. my favourite. Um, but I say that season season four mm. just really got me. It really like it, the way that they the character of Donna was. Just, I'd never. She's my favourite companion. I'd never seen a companion yeah. like that before. Mm. Um, and yeah, just incredible 
the way that it just really just put you right through the ringer that whole thing so mm. just what you need on an asteroid to feel even worse absolutely you know? yeah. yeah and, and <laughs> you know but it does have a it does have that joyous kind of battle with the daleks and all the yeah. you know with sarah jane and captain jack and martha everybody around the tardis which is which is a real punch yeah, in the air moment great, i think yeah. isn't it it's then, seeing then everything donald, coming together and then donald loses a memory yeah yeah that's yeah. I don't yeah. like that, actually. Yeah. But, <laughs> but we might get a resolution to that in the in yeah. the upcoming specials, by the looks of it. I, I really, really hope so. So I hope he doesn't blow up. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skinny man, skinny man. Oh, uh, yeah. I must admit, I, I can't wait. I, I think I think it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Jeff, what would your one season uh, of Doctor Who be? I'd, ooh, I'd probably. Uh, I really like Flux. I think I would take that. It's. Uh, mm. Uh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, I wish it was eight yeah. episodes, not six. I think they would have oh. really oh. gone to town on it. But I, and yeah. as we said, made during COVID. I mean, yeah, there's, me there's, there's a number of reasons I, I like it, but that that's one of them. The fact that they pulled all that off under, you know, we could have had no who at all that year, you know, mm. uh, and the fact that it was that uh, ambitious was was impressive. Yeah, mm. uh, but I do I do like I do like season eight and nine a lot as well. I do. But I'm going to go Season Flux. eight and nine, the uh, Capaldi. classic. Yeah. Oh, Pete yeah. Capaldi ones but, series, but yeah, 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 yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that is a hard question. I'm going to go. With of course, Flux. it is. That's You're going with Flux. With. I am. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Very good. Okay. Just for the record, I'm, uh, I've already made up my mind because I've had all day to think about this, and I've decided <laughs> that it's going to yeah. be uh, season twenty-one, the final Peter Davison series. Frontiers, uh, The Awakening, Warriors of the Deep, Caves of Androzani, and The Twin Dilemma. But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it's part of it. It's there. So, I love the Dilemma. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind it. You know? <laughs> we spoke We spoke to Kevin McNally, didn't we, a little yeah. while ago? And, uh, and I asked him about The Twin Dilemma, and he says, Ah, yes, yes, the, uh, the, the, the one story which is voted constantly by fans has been the worst ever Doctor Who story. And I said, well, I don't mind it. You know, sure, there's loads well, of things well. that could have been better about it, but it's there and it's fun. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. why not? <laughs> it's brilliant. Okay, right, that is the end of our feature, the Grand Serpent's Asteroid. So we're going to close the the door, the portal, and leave you to it with all <laughs> your, um, you know, Star Treks and your Buffies and your Series Four and all the rest of it. <laughs> Obviously, we're not we're not going to do that. So yeah, we are going to wish you. Uh, well, we are going to say. Darren Scott, thank you so much for thank, joining yeah, us you. on on Who Corners Corner. I, I've I've had a blast, mate. I, yeah. I can't you know, believe we've been talking for blooming hours. Seriously, yeah. as as often <laughs> as often with um, a lot of cutting. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. Bumper uh, episode, I think. Yeah, and as often with our guests, you know, we we could just keep talking. I think, but you know, people have got my family stuff have to literally do, gone you know? to bed. I can yeah. I can hear yeah. them. I, I, I got to get the kids' stuff ready for school. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've checked the dogs out, so that's my uh, that's all right. Uh, yeah, that's going. yes, yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, it's been an absolute right. blast, Darren. Thanks for joining us, Thank mate. It's been much. a real yeah. pleasure and a privilege to talk to you. And uh, yeah, what can I say? All the best of luck with um, the you know with SFX and everything else you do. And uh, yeah, thanks for flying the flag for uh, yep. sci-fi and fantasy and horror yeah, and all going. the stuff we like to geek out about, man. It's brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, watch this space for a lot more Doctor Who later. Oh, Looking oh, forward to it. You heard it there first. Yeah. Thank Definitely. you, listeners, for joining Brilliant. us. We'll see Thanks you again everyone. on another podcast soon. coming very soon. Take care. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Bye.